Kyle, I'll, I'll let you know when it says we're live and I'll let you kind of at least kick it off. This is your okay. channel. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> Why is it taking so long? Does it usually take that long for you? Oh, you're live. For me, it's like. We're live? We're live. Hey, welcome back to No Hype Beer Reviews. Unless it's your first time, then welcome. Please consider subscribing. If you do, hit the notification bell. Daily updates. Also, subscribe to these guys Matt from Massive Beer Review and Sean and Mike from Nerd Sense. And I'm glad that we're all together again to do round two of our all together beers. Um, the main three that most of us will be doing come from uh, Sean and Mike at Nerd Sense. Um, and actually, if Sean wants to, we can start talking about what the individual breweries are. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the first one, which um, is the last one we got, and um, unfortunately Matt does not have this one because the U.S. Postal Service, I don't know, I guess sucks. I don't know what happened. Getting shut down. <laughs> I think you should file a formal complaint about the illegal substance you mailed in. in, in, in <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I want yeah. an insurance. Like, you ever seen those reports of like people that get like sold like fake weed and then they call the cops and be like, oh, they sold me fake weed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So this is Trilliums. Like I said, this was canned on 519, 2020. There says 7%. So they're going ballsy on it. Oh, it does. I didn't even yeah. notice that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I have another one, not out of these three, that says 6'2, another one that's 6. Um, and then there's yeah. Bent Water out of Lynn, Mass. Uh, that's coming in at six five. Um, there's no can on date on this. I got it a couple weeks ago, so I imagine it's probably a, close to a month ish. And then there's um, Rising Tide. They and they and they kind of added a neat little silver label instead of uh, the white. They're out of Portland, Maine. Can on date on this one is four twenty three. So this is a little over a month old. And six five as well. Mike, is there so, any way you can I mean, turn your mic down a little bit? <laughs> It, Me? It, no, 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 Mike. Oh. It, like, is there a setting on like the iPhone or the iPad to like turn the slider down because it picks up like so much? <laughs> no. Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll can you look? Can you can you lower my input? No, because you're all together coming coming through Google. Oh, yeah. see, all together. This is we should be like Pee Wee's Playhouse where like when you say the word it's like everyone freaks out. <laughs> All together. <laughs> actually it's actually it's 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 fine now. So maybe it was um but now I can hear background too. Hmm. Uh, it's, we'll, we'll make it work, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. But, uh, but you were yeah. you were talking about the all together, um, and that one that was a little bit different, and you said another one was a little bit different. Nobody, nobody's going to beat Mortalis in this one because that's a brewery up by, uh, it's actually probably closest to Kyle. It's out in a, yeah. I uh, heard a closer it. Rochester, New York. Yeah, it is a 7% all together beer that is a sour with seven berries and like lactose and marshmallow fluff. And like it's totally not even fucking close to the beer they're supposed to make, which is also kind of a dick move, but also kind of cool. So, whatever. Well, I guess if it does, does it have the same hops, does it have the same malt? And then they just added some extra stuff. The base is there. That's what yeah. matters. I saw yeah. one, uh, I think Buried Acorn is their name. And yeah, it was like a sour they had been aging for what, a year or eight months, whatever. Like it was definitely, it was obviously not what this is. Oh, see, that's, pop, that's a little weird. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> like they didn't um, even bruise it the new. Um, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. It was yeah, getting made. Um, yeah. Well, I pour them. Yeah. Um, I know I got made fun of for going alphabetical order last time. Um, I'll do that. I'll switch. It's your it's, it's your channel, Kyle. You can do whatever you want. Well, I know, but it wasn't my channel last time, and it kind of dictated that. So I'll try to be a little bit more democratic this time. Um, did you end up grabbing Whichever one just fell, I want to do. <laughs> Whichever one that sh uh, shook the shit out of is the one I want to open right now. Um, Matt, did you end up getting another brewery one just now? Uh, yeah, I ended up picking up this one. This is actually sent to me. I believe it was by Andrew. I could be wrong on that because um, I didn't have time to look it up because I grabbed it literally right before he went off the air. He actually sent me this one. It's from a brewery I've never heard before, which is uh, Cedarsburg, uh, uh, Cedarsburg, what, Tomasa in Wisconsin, and it's from the Fermentorium. Never heard of them before, but it's a 6.5% paleo. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, but which one are we doing first? Bent water, you said? Bent water, yeah. yeah. You guys want to pour? I think last time we poured them all first, right? 
Yes. Yeah, we, yeah. So we'll do that, and then just yeah, so people know when Mike Tone and I are talking about Trillium, Matt will talk about the one from Wisconsin yeah. we just spoke about. I'm gonna open the Trillium one next and open and give Rising Tide another second to settle. So <laughs> no, no. Let, let's open the Trillium last. That way, it's uniform. We all, you know what I mean? Because if we're gonna go beers we have, beer we don't have, all don't have, then beer we all have. Do you get what I'm saying here? You just we're doing well. It didn't shake that much. You'll okay. be fine. That, uh, this this bet water actually looks proper. Yeah, we're good. As far as coloration so, goes, so, just in general. So, so full disclosure, I have had the bent water, but only like okay. half a can. So Matt, I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood. What do you want to do with the, when we're doing the trillium? Not pour that yet. No, I'd like to pour the rising tide now, so we can go yeah. beer we have, beer we have, different beers. So that way we yeah, kind of, yeah. you know what okay. I mean. Yeah. yeah, for us, it's trillium would be the third one anyway. One, two, and three. Oh, oh, you already poured the trillium? Yeah. You just weren't listening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nobody is listening. No, I already poured them. Next. Oh, fair enough. I poured them, I poured all of mine. Fair enough. Oh. So that's what we did last yeah. time. Yeah. And I actually have to, because I didn't know I was going to do three, I actually have to go get another glass for the last okay. one. So excuse me. They, they look similar in in color there there's a little bit more opaque it's hard to hold all three at once for me I sorry to the rising tide is much clearer and like it pours much clearer it looks water more it, it looks more like yeah. a saison almost this like a farm one, the rising tide and it, it does look clearer the the color is similar it's just more of like the amount of haze unfiltering it whatever yeah. you want to say the color is pretty close and then you go to the trillium, which is a, this one is the trillium. It's a hair different color and it's thicker again. You know, I just realized the live stream automatically added your logo. So I'm going to take, because it looks weird the way I put, when I put yours on. So I'm going to take it off. Okay. Say what? No, so I added Kyle's logo in OBS, but then I realized that YouTube automatically adds his logo anyways. And now it just looks weird. Oh, so, so. it's stacked like yeah. on top of each other. Yeah. Well, shot doing that. If anyone is subscribed to NerdSense, they're so close to 500 subscribers. Go and subscribe to them right now. Leave the live stream. If you're watching this later on when it's not live, hit uh, pause. No, click off of it. Go to NerdSense. I want to get them up to 500 ASAP. Anyway, all right. Thanks for doing yeah. that. Stuff. Thanks, guys. On that, uh, on that note, and you should, I mean, I don't know why you guys aren't even at a thousand level Make no 500, sense. but, um, yeah, we'll have to talk about um, we'll have to talk about uh, James from Rampant Lion. Do you guys do you guys hear about that? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. I I saw you, you know who the, he is. I saw you did the live stream. I I watched like some of it this uh, this afternoon. Was it the live stream? No, wait. What am I thinking of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the live stream. But you know who he is. I didn't know who he was when I first started watching the live stream, and then and then it came back to me. Okay. I seemed like a handful. No, he's one of my favorite beer reviewers. Um, he's from uh, he's from Scotland, but he lives in I believe in uh, Scandinavia right now, maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, close to Copenhagen. Wait, maybe. Rampant Lion Beer Reviews. Um, he actually uh, commented quite a bit on the Hot Butcher feed we did, but anyway, Scottish guy, super nice. His beer reviews are awesome because they're super long format. They're like a half an hour. He he goes in every beer and he talks about the origin of the beer, origin yes, of the brewery, yeah. the whole nine. He's do, right, on, on 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 Sunday morning, on Sunday afternoon, he had thirty five hundred subscribers. Somebody on Reddit posted one of his videos and he got four thousand subscribers in twenty four hours. He went from 3,500 <laughs> subscribers to 47,700 subscribers in, in 24 yeah. hours. Because some it was some random forum about like, oh, I found something I like on the internet. And apparently the person that posted it was like a, a person with super cred on like Reddit. So he got he got 4,000 and changed subscribers in 24 hours. That's well deserved. He's been doing it a long time and he's fantastic. He's just yeah. not a lot of people watch him because it's super long format. Some of them go an hour, half an hour to an hour. Oh. Wow. Anyway. No, it's that's awesome. Wow, that's crazy. So somebody post this on Reddit if you have polls. So, yeah. <laughs> the nerd I, sense guys blow up. I post all of our all of our videos to like slash beer reviews and slash beer videos. I get like nothing. <laughs> yeah, see, I just post I post mine to the uh, Reddit feed. Uh, Am I the asshole? And I'm always the asshole, so I don't I don't get any kind of you know, followers. Uh, there's a faction. You ever go to that Reddit? What, no, but Reddit? no, but I need to. Go it's next. the best. It's basically people going, I, this happened in my life. Am I the asshole? That's awesome. Oh, I like it. That's yeah. a cool idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I get like the public opinion of it. 
Um, so we last time we did a live stream, we went 30 minutes before we drank any beer. I don't want to do that again. Okay. Let's start drinking now. Bent water. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the bent water. It's got that a... smells like tropical juices. This one. It smells pretty fucking awesome, to be perfectly honest with you. It it's a little does. pledgy and it's a little pledgy um and, and lemony, lemon. but yeah. I'm cool with it. I can actually get down to that because that lemon, I don't mind a little bit of lemon pop in a beer because it reminds me of Brett. Um yeah. so I'm cool. Oh, with nice. it. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It almost has like a sugary sweetness going on too, like a little bit of lactose, maybe, or well when Matt said pledge, what I was thinking is like Sprite or something, mm. like like soda, which I think is maybe your sweetness. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely because it does have that much lemon. Yeah, it does. It smells good. Oh, and here's a can it. on date. Sorry, it's, it's on the side of the can, not the bottom. Five eleven, so it's way oh. under a month, like under, unlike I thought. So yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, barely, almost three weeks old. Yeah, it smells it smells pretty. Did we smell them all that drink? I don't remember how we did it last. Yes, time. smelled them all. Okay, smell them all. Okay, so rising tide. Oh, that smells way different. Yeah, it, it does. does. Yeah, I don't get as much lemon. No, and I mean this. This is more a little more like I get like a little caramel, a little bit of maybe a little stone fruit in there. I was thinking peach, so I'm glad you said stone fruit. Yeah, peach. Peach makes sense. See, they actually kind of. I'm. I think they smell kind of similar. It's just this one is like the volume's knocked down up quite a bit. Like yeah, it's not it's, like overtly different beer. It's just that you know, take it from an eleven to like a seven yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Heated. You get the lemon in the rising tide, man. I do, but I, I honestly, it, it, it could just be me. You know? That's why we do these, you know? Could have different... No, I think I think I have something on my hands, and I keep smelling my hands, because I usually don't do that, but I was rushing, so. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we'll do the Trillium, Matt, and then you'll do the Wisconsin. Oh, that one's, this one's actually has most almost like acidity to it. Yeah, this one. And so, yeah, this beer came out a couple weeks ago, given the Canon date, but... I, I almost get, like, cedar, like a, a woody... I'm getting almost like like a chemical kind of thing. I'm getting Trillium Hot Burn, but in a... In a oh, you know what? In, a, that's turn, what in a turned-down way, though. Like, this reminds me of almost like... Just like any, like, like Headroom Big Bird, but super muted Hot Burn. You know what? Actually, one of the things I'm getting, and it makes so much sense, is when we did that mystery beer, it was something I was having a hard time describing. It's that. So I'm wondering if it's like the Trillium yeast, maybe, or something that I'm getting. Mm. Um, yeah. But they, this one definitely smells the most different. How about you, Matt? What are you getting? I'm sorry, what was the name of that brewery again? The name of the brewery is called the Fermentorium. Um, they are uh, located in Cedarsburg, Wisconsin. Um, I don't know anything about them. I've never had any of their beers before, but I mean... Uh, you know, I guess if you look at this bent water, from my perspective, the bent water is kind of like Marion Webster dictionary, hazy pale ale in color. It's kind of what I expect a uh, hazy pale to kind of look like. Look at the soupiness of this beer compared to that one. Oh, yeah. It, it has this oh. kind of like, yeah, it's like, it's this is turkey gravy. This yeah. is butternut squash soup. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it has, a, it has like a little bit of like a hop like a, a like a super hop kind of not hop burn but it's just like got this muddled like you ever hear of hop creep and they talk about diacetyl getting coming from hop creep and when you over dry hopping it it te- smells like it's kind of getting there but it hasn't got there yet other than that i'm not getting much off so fair enough uh let's get into the bent water gentlemen cool cheers cheers, cheers. You know what? When I think about what I want this beer to taste like, this is pretty close. I think it tastes exactly like it smells. It's dominated by that pledgy thing. Yep. Um, that you know, it has a little bit of hot grain to it, not burning, but green. Um, it wants to have like onion vibes, but it just doesn't get there. And then, uh, you know, and then it's uh, got a nice mouthfeel. I'm cool with it. It's a little dry. I, I don't mind that either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, finishes. Yeah, and then it's gone. The finish for sure. Yeah, I, I get. I'm probably two thirds le- like for the citrus note, two thirds lemon, then a third just like navel orange. So I do get a little bit of orange juice, but it yeah. it does like the aroma. And I agree with you, Matt. Have that pledge lemon thing. Yeah. 
And I don't, and I want to preface that with, I don't think it's negative. It doesn't smell like caustic chemical pledge. It just has this overtly vibrant orange peel kind of characteristic to it. It doesn't taste like a caustic chemical. It's not like no, I'm no. tasting pledge. You know what I mean? Some people will be like, oh, wait, he likes it, but it tastes like pledge. No, that's not, you know. <laughs> the zesty quality of, no, I, I, yeah. for sure, I get that. I tell you what, for, again, especially six and a half percent, like that's a beer on a hot day. I could drink, you know, a few of those in a row. Yeah, I, 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 when, when I did have half the can, I was pretty surprised because, like Mike said, he's never really had a bent water he liked, and I wouldn't go as far as that. I've had bent waters that I was like, all right, I'll drink it, but I've never been like super impressed by their stuff. I've been more hurt than than not. So when okay. when I tried this, I was like, oh wow, they kind of did did this one really, 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 really well. Which I would be very interesting interested if I was you you guys moving forward, because you know not everybody learns to brew the same way. So maybe having giving a given a footprint, giving a you know a fingerprint of how to mm -hmm. make a beer, you know what I mean, percentage wise, all that stuff. Maybe they just didn't. They're just a little bit off. And they brew this, and someone basically gave them a playbook, and they do it. And it comes out well, and they might rethink the way they approach beers. Just a thought. You know? yeah, but it's also. It's also something I haven't had in a couple of years now, so there's a lot of things can change in a couple of years. That's yeah. true. Would you say you like this beer, Mike? It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I had the same thought, just not about this beer in and specifically, just in general, like how many breweries are participating and how many of them, you know, like, yeah, other half is like, here's how we do it, you know, and, uh, you know, adapting, you know, taking, uh, you yeah, know, like you said, page out of playbook. Um, all right. Let's well, do it. Okay. Yeah, it's part it's part that, but it's also like, you know, you can read a recipe by, you know, Gordon Ramsay and, and that doesn't mean you're gonna pull it off like him. So, yep. so true. <laughs> yeah. All right. Rising tide, gentlemen. Rising tide, Portland, Maine. Cheers again. Cheers. Cheers. Maltier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was getting that like almost like a caramel thing on the nose. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. This one's a little more bland. It's not there's not as much going on. I feel. I get a little bit of lemon. I'm getting a little bit of like uh, caramel kind of ca um, character, but it is dry, similar to the bent water. Is there is that does anyone get a little bit little bit of diacetyl, like a little butteriness? If you let it sit on your like back palate, yeah. I could be wrong though. I, I think the the. Caramel thing, caramel thing. Mike's talking about might be partly that, Sean. Mm. I, I think there's some overlap, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I don't get any of the caramel thing myself. Interesting. Um, yeah, Car I don't get it. it. It comes off. It comes off again, very similar to the other beer. Just take that pledge thing and turn it more into a zesty thing, like a vibrant kind of like lemon, like that's that's pledgy, and over here, but here it's like actual, legitimately more zest. There's no real caramel thing, but it's like a. I understand. I think I understand where you're coming from. It has like a, an opposite but similar thing, and then it's, it's like grainy, like an uncooked grain. So it's like instead of being like caramel grain, it's like the grain wasn't toasted enough, and it comes off like raw grainy a little bit to me. But that's just me. Oh, the, the the no uh, the caramel specific I'm getting on the nose itself, like I'm getting okay. that in the nose. On the taste, I'm, I'm getting it, it's um, it's it's actually a little bit bland, a little bit like um like maybe yeah like uncooked cereal grains maybe, and it's just a little bit of lemon, but it, it but it does dry up in the back for me as well. I, I very it could be. Sorry, go ahead. No, it could be because um, when Sean was talking about uh, diacetyl, you know, with diacetyl, you're talking about butter. You can talk about butterscotch, and I know for me, sometimes my brain confuses caramel and butterscotch. So you could be getting diacetyl, you know what I mean, and you're just processing it as butterscotch, yeah, which is kind of, sort of, kind of close to caramel. Like I can, on a nose or taste, sometimes I can confuse chocolate and vanilla. So there's a lot of flavors that can be kind of close oh. to each other. So that could be it, and that can definitely go from can to can, and and there could be variants in it. Sure. Yeah. And it is There's older too, so it could be that as well. It is not as fresh as the rest, right? So, Kyle, what are you getting on on your palate here with this? There, one? There's a moment, like it's weird because I kept talking about with the bent water of the lemon, 
there's a moment with this rising tide where there's it's almost like a citric acid gummy bear. Like I, I get this sweetness, and then I'm getting that lemon citric acid thing. So it's it's very it's not the whole experience, but there's it's I don't know maybe seventy percent through the sip where I get this like lemon citric acid candy thing, um, which was making me kind of maybe combine the lemon vest with the sweetness I'm getting. Um, which is not an unpleasant thing, but I do like this less and I like the best water. Yeah, I agree. But um, um, I would be fine with it. If I was rising tide, I would be proud of this beer. It's good. It's good. It's good beer. Anything else before we go to our third beers? Let's do it. Let's do it. Here's again. Cheers. Cheers. just a little bit harsh it is and like I, I especially after doing that mystery beer we all did and like it was trillium and it was uh i didn't want to again be like what is this from trillium but it's pretty harsh i agree mike well yeah and like the the dialed in that mike and i did and that matt did with the mystery beer we sent and then the streets that that we the streets and streets on streets with you kyle like i don't know man this is it's a lot of uh, a lot of misses. I have five more cans of this, so I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I got a bunch in my fridge now. <laughs> Shit. Time to send out beer beer mills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those beer mills went out before we got three drank it. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't know. What live stream? <laughs> <laughs> we just delete um, it afterwards. How about yours, I again can't help but notice yeah that what that beer looks like compared to all the other ones it tastes like, it tastes like what it looks like brother really? yeah like maybe yeah. <laughs> no you know what and here's the thing it's just not good it, like it tastes like and i'm gonna say this in a way that's gonna sound way worse than it actually is but it tastes like 100 pounds of shit stuffed in a 50 pound bag <laughs> and that it tastes like uh it tastes like they tried to ram so many hops into it but then it oxidized out, so now it's just like a soupy green oxidized hot mess. Oh, that's horrible. It, it doesn't look yeah. like dark, actually. Huh? <laughs> that's what it looks like, actually. So it's not. And here's the thing: I don't think I can look oxidized because I think there's so much hot particulate in it. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm getting like hot. Like I'm. It's not the most aggressive hot green in the world, but my every time I take a sip, it, the burning on my tongue, like raw garlic, gets larger and larger. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not going to drink another set. Let's put it that way. Have you had <laughs> anything from them before? No? Never. No. This came from a uh, a viewer that sent me a beer mail for the first time. Fair enough. A, uh, yeah, a bunch of Wisconsin stuff. It was, and, um, I remember his that, name yeah. Was, yeah, Andrew, I believe his name was. Nice. And, uh, yeah, he sent me a bunch of mystery beers and a bunch of stuff, and, and this is in there, and you know, it's cool. I'm glad I got to try it, even if it's not my favorite beer, you know? Yeah, and it fits in what we're doing right now, trying to compare and, different altogethers, and that's literally what we're doing. And, and, and that's the one thing I think people need to realize, too, when we're doing these beers, outside of what we think about the, these beers, is that these brewers are being handed recipes. Sure, they can do what they do with them, but they're handing a recipe not, might not be all that familiar with. Mm -hmm. So they might be brewing a beer that's not up to up to whatever, now, I know nothing about this brewery, but when I look at a beer called beer from a brewery called the Fermentorium, I immediately think of wild beer, sour beer, funky beer. You know what I mean? The Fermentorium. You know what I mean? So maybe this isn't in their wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, and, but they decided to stay true to what, you know what I mean, the beer is right. supposed to be. Yeah. These are all speculation on my part, but it is what it is. So that's that's something you want to keep in mind. No, that's, that's very fair. Yeah. Um, this is okay, and you guys are more familiar with Trillium than I am. This is one of the, like I've already thought with Trillium IPAs, you gotta let them sit for a few weeks before you drink them. Do you think this would benefit from another two weeks, maybe, or do you think it's just it is what it is? It doesn't. You know, you guys. Right, no, 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 no. You know, you're gonna go first. Go. I said it doesn't. I imagine it'll mellow out a little bit. I don't think this is going to develop anything substantial. I think maybe the, the, the harshness might d calm down. I'm not. I don't think you're going to develop any real new flavors. 
Yeah, it's not the harshness that we were used to when you let it settle down and then it got great. What it's been is it's been harsh and weird and muted, and then it just kind of got maybe a little tad better, like we saw with the Streets on Streets. Like, Streets didn't get much better. But Streets on Streets had, it was like, okay, this is this is drinkable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 very it's very strange. Disappointing. Yeah, that too. And I mean this comment less towards Trillium, but um, I think we talked about it last time. Um, you, you, these aren't tried and true recipes. I guess it's true for Trillium too. These aren't tried and true recipes, and like sometimes, like oh, it's their new beer, or it's their anniversary beer. They've never brewed this before. I'm so excited to try this new beer, this brewery, and it's like. Oh wait, those beers that they brew over and over and over again, they you know, they lock it in, you know it's gonna be consistently good. We're also doing this weird thing where it's like, yeah, it's a, a recipe from you know, of all places, other half. Yeah. But um it's stuff they never brewed before. Right. Yeah. They've brewed an, they've brewed a seven percent IPA before though. Well, and that's why I started <laughs> off with maybe less so with Trillium and then I decided yeah. to include yeah. them because they've brewed this beer before, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love oh. to try other halves just to see the proper version of it. Like the like cuz I guess cuz they've now brewed it 3 times and they they brewed it as is. They double dry hopped it and then other half Rochester just posted today that they're like, "Oh, we're going to jump on the bandwagon and brew our own version." And they added like cryo and lupulin powder to it for the same hops and stuff. So yeah, it would be interesting to to try other halves to see like what the you know what what the recipe was initially like supposed to taste like I guess but I've yeah and I guess does does Trillium's even drink heavier than I guess it's only half a percent but the, the, and Mike hit it the second he tried it I mean the the only thing I taste different is that it's <laughs> not good it's just it's hard. It's yeah. just that that's what you get. It's like this is a harsh version of this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Put, put yeah, that's, that on that's your that's website, a... Water and Rising Tide. You brewed better than Trillium. You did better than Trillium. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, that's that's a that's what For, over through the lot of us, different beers. What is that? Five swings and misses in a row. More yeah, or less. That, that 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 that's a slump. That's not a blip. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I know uh, you guys agree. Um, like, I Trillium's good. Like, I, I take, take no pleasure when we un, <laughs> unwrap that. And it was a Trillium beer. Uh, we did the uh, blind beer, the mystery beer. Um, yeah, Trillium is the first brewery I can think of that I really went out of my way to get their beers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when when I was able to go to stores and get their beers in bottles when they were first distributing. It was the first brewery I was driving around to get their beer. You know, like, um, it was soon after I'd moved home. Like, it's not like, like, other than Hawaii for most of my 20s, it's not like you couldn't do a lot of that in Hawaii. There's not a lot of, to drive to. So yeah. you went to stores to get beer. And coming home and uh, the brewery boom is out of control. Trillium was the first brewery that I was really going to find. Because, yeah. I mean, they were my favorite brewery for a good while. And... I've been disappointed with almost everything I've had this year, and that sucks. Except for the daily servings, the daily servings are good. Yeah, that one was good. Yeah, that the one I, of those I had was very good. Just the um, IPAs. Yeah, I and because I haven't had it yet, but uh, Sean had sent me uh, what is it, night and day, night and dawn, night and day. PM. Yeah. Um, and uh, I haven't tried it yet, but he said that one's really good. So yeah, maybe it's just their IPAs. We got a good question from Douglas. You know, we can't pull up the or yeah comments. What are your opinions about altogether, overhyped or not? I mean, I've had the six we've done on these streams. I, my opinion is awesome idea. I, I guess I'll go first since I'm talking. Great idea, raising money for charity, uh, uh, something that needs, uh, you know, people need money now. So obviously an awesome idea. Like I said a couple minutes ago, like, you know, this is a first time recipe for people. So your expectation also has, I think, consider that. But, you know, here's two breweries I've never heard of who did a good job with it. And counting the ones we had the last time, it's they've been pretty hit or miss. I think, actually, that might be batting 500 for me. So I can tell you the one we had from Spyglass was really, really, really good. It was really, really good. 
So just to put that out there, um, the ones I've had on here, they've been okay to not good. Like I mean, the, the, these two, these two are pretty good, but the last ones we had, uh, the flame was not very good, and the ones we had on the last show, I didn't like at all. I, I went, I kind of approached it a little bit differently. Um, I, it's weird because I didn't go into these. Not, 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 I'm not just saying the beers that we've done here, but in general, the whole, the whole all together thing. I didn't go into it to be like, okay, all of these are going to be awesome. Yeah. I kind of took it like. This is, and, and I'm no way, shape, or form trying to say that the beer is a competition, but it's the first time we've ever gotten close to everybody being on a level playing field as far as making a beer. So I was really curious to see who was going to do what with it, because it's not like, obviously, people are getting a little playing loose and fast at the rules that were set from the beginning, but... In a grand scheme of things, it's about as close as you're gonna get for everybody to be like everybody brew the same beer. Who makes the best one? That, and, and not that that's the, that's not the spirit of the beer. That's not what it's all about. I don't care what it, I. I mean, obviously, I hope it's good, but I don't care what it tastes like. I know the money's going for a good cause. That's the whole reason for it. But there's also that secondary part going. Okay, everybody's kind of on a level playing field here. Who's who's gonna really shine? And that's kind of where I took it from. And it's interesting to see. Yeah. Who, what you get from these beers and that was kind of my my hope going into it and if it's good or bad or indifferent it doesn't it doesn't diminish tasting them for me it's just more more of a more of an exposure to what people are capable of. right i like uh, i like it for what it is sean we're addressing douglas's question about these beers are they being hyped or not hyped? Yeah. what are our opinions I, just to get you caught up bud Mike, you were going to say cool. something? Oh, I was i was gonna ask matt based on what he kind of was going for was what was the best one he's had so far Hmm. Hmm. Probably the one I haven't had yet. Um. Oh no. Uh, I don't know. I haven't had an amazing one yet. Let's put it that way. And uh, and just based off of what I've had, it's probably a three way tie between that KCBC and these two. And the KCBC wasn't even really that good. It's just a matter of the. I think these are fine. These are. I think when we when I do the cuvee in these, I think I'm going to really enjoy these two much better. Yeah. I think they're going to pair pair well together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't had a really good one yet. But I have, I have five in my fridge. I'm waiting to do a video on. I have one from Kane. I have one from Bolero Snort down by me. I have Carton's one. I have a bunch of breweries that I typically like their beer, so I'm kind of curious to see what they they do with it. Sean, what's the best one you've had so far? Um, I would say. Spyglass is the one that 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 I remember the most, um, and I keep going back to. Probably, it's definitely going to be Spyglass and and, and and Bentwater for one and two. Um, three is probably KCBC as well. Uh, Zigmeister was an, an Zigmeister was an interesting take on it, um, <laughs> but what about you, Mike? Let's put it this way: I'd have a much easier time telling you which ones I didn't like over the ones I did. Yeah. And that's not the yeah. point of it, so I'm not gonna say it. Uh, yeah, no, Sean. I, I said I think you were away. I, I said that I uh, Spyglass was really, really good, and the rest of them been like okay and not good and to me. I'd love them to, to rebrew it because if they have a rebrew, well, then again, if they rebrew it, it could be not a different beer, but it couldn't be as magical. You know what I mean? But yeah, but okay. it is what it is. So I just gave Carrie the cans, and just like last time, she went the complete opposite, pretty much <laughs> of, of what we said. And I and, and she she picked Trillium first, and I was like, really? She goes, yeah. I feel like it's less harsh, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's definitely not watching the stream. There's there's no way now. She's up there watching whatever reality show she's watching. And so so I went Trillium, Rising Tide, Bentwater. She goes, I seem like they get like she's like I think they get more bitter as they go. But she just drank them straight from the can, and then she picked the Rising Tide to finish right now. And then she's gonna go back in the fridge and pick the and, and, and go through the rest. Wow. Didn't she, didn't she change her mind halfway through though? Oh, you're I right. I did get it. You're right. I did get a text. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious to see if that happens. Again. Yeah. Uh, Joe from the Beer Patrol is watching. What's up, Joe? Oh shit! Hey, Joe. Oh, what's going on? He's alive. Long he's time, alive. no speak. He's alive. That's no, that's not him. That's whoever <laughs> took over Joe's body and soul is just trolling us <laughs> from his wherever he is. <laughs> um. All right, can we, in honor of Joe, can we cuvee now? Yeah. It, no, we can't cuvee. We can cuvee. Cuvee. <laughs> do the cuvee. So are you guys yeah, going to do all three? 
Oh, no, we're not. No one's going to do that. Shut up. <laughs> Kyle, did you just do it? I don't think I can fit all three. I'm not doing all three. I'm going to do, I'm going to, no, no, what can I do here? Because I don't have, a, I don't have, a, I don't have an extra glass. Shit. He's um, more I, glasses at 30. He has beer in it. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to pour this one and this one. And then I'll drink a little bit. Then I'll pour the Trillium in. See what happens. Perfect. Hmm. The problem solver right there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It, you, didn't have, the, you didn't have a treat, though. This looks great. So this is a Bentwater and Rising Tide mixed. Mm. Yours looks way different than mine do. Mine does. It's all free like yeah. a boss. Then again, it's all the lighting, so who knows. Um, it, honestly, it still just tastes like the Rising Tide to me. I think it's got a. I think it tastes like the Rising Tide, amplified. Like, like it has a little bit more of a punch. It tastes like a a, 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 a true, like five five point three percent pale ale more than, more than a six and a half percent beer. I did all three, and obviously it cuts down the harshness of the Trillium, and it actually kind of Here, tastes do this. closer to what I think a fresh trillium tastes like where you want to let it sit for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll pour some in here. Look at that pour. Yes, that is look, perfect. Look that. And look, and, and you know what the best part? Proper glassware. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a third pop, proper glassware. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> okay. No, this is all three together. <laughs> you want to know the best part is? Even though this is a trillium glass, I, even, I, I still labeled it trillium on the piece of tape so that I don't know why. <laughs> just, because, just because I was like, I have to have tape on all three. Uh, actually, honestly, all three mixed together taste better. Which, Kyle, you are you are spot on with what you said, pretty much. Yeah, I think you're right. <sighs> Which I think we said last time, didn't we? That when we did the cuvee, we we said it was better. And it, it, did we leave out the mean max? Did we cuvee? Out? Yeah, we left the one out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but Kyle, um, all, all mixed up, this does taste like a sort of a regular Trillium IPA. Yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> that is kind of odd, <laughs> man. Jesus Christ! So, nerd sense, did you guys film anything before we did this live stream? Any? I mean, was, you guys typically on Friday do your reviews. No, not today. No, we have okay. a couple things to film after this. Um, okay. Mostly me eating ice cream. Yeah, nice. I can't. I can't. Wait. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Matt? Did you film anything before this, or? Nah, I had a crazy day today, man. Work-wise, in general, it was just insane. And like I said, I, I had to, I had to run and go grab provisions. So I, I got home and, and uh, ate a, ate a turkey burger real quick and just sat down. You know, so I might do some things tonight. I don't know if I'm just gonna play video games or hang out or whatever. What did you, did you do anything? No. Uh, yeah, I worked today and then I didn't do much uh pick, did some takeout and then did this yeah and yeah supposed to thunder we did um who did who did who dropped kibasa queen was it you nerd sense did that today right yeah we, yeah we did ours kibasa today. King? We did it today yeah i dropped mine today too so we're we're, we're beer review twinsies today oh yeah yeah video Duh, i watched yours earlier i forgot oh and i started and i started watching the uh what was the one that um you said ocean key i started watching and then i got sidetracked with something else and then i had to finish mm -hmm. it but yeah. yeah, the beginning. Like, I'm waiting for Jer I'm waiting for Jeremiah to get back. I, mean, I, <laughs> I, I got to like the first few sips and I was like, "This is this is pretty hilarious." But like you said, that one, Matt, the flavor was good, but like it didn't drink like a beer. So yeah, yeah. which I didn't put it was, through. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. I, I didn't shit on it, but I, yeah. I knew it wasn't. I didn't. I knew it wasn't exactly what they would want to hear. Again, it is what it is. I don't care. But yeah, yeah. I, I really like Kielbasa King. No, no, no. He's not talking about that. No, that beer was good. That beer was no, good. I was talking about Ocean Ocean Key. This other one. He, 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 oh, sorry. I, I don't think he, keep, he, My internet's bad. I keep, people keep cutting out, so yeah. I don't hear everything. Sorry. Uh, yeah, he sent me one. I, I think he sent me one that I don't think. Yeah. I don't he, think he, he, anybody else. Yeah, he said he, he only sent it to you. Yeah. So. Okay. Which you'd be like, hey, I'm cool. I only. But he sends you guys like five times the amount of beer that I get now. So <laughs> you know, I'm I'm I'm. Poor man over here. I get like three, three. I get like six cans of hot butcher instead of a half a case. <laughs> um, so Matt, have, someone's at, Douglas is asking in the comments: Have you ever had Dark Knight Bourbon Barrel Aged by Anderson's Craft Beer? It's a barley wine. 
Anderson's Craft Beer. I've never even heard. I've heard of Anderson's Valley. Yeah. Um, from out from out west, but um, Dark Knight. No, I've never right, had Dark it before. Boy. I've never heard of it either. All right. Yeah. No, yeah. I haven't heard of that. You either. would assume. Uh, I mean, well, that's. I mean, Hasselson's is out in uh, Europe. So I don't know if he's oh, okay. if he's referencing a European beer because uh, I believe correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, but he might be from the Netherlands too. I'm not sure, um, but I do. I'm almost positive. Um, Anderson's Craft Beer is from oh Canada. Okay. Uh, Anderson Craft Ales is from Canada. Okay. And uh, let's see, Douglas, are you seeing a lot of altogether beers over there? I'd, I'd be curious about that. What they're doing in Europe would be or not. Yeah, and Joe, the Beer Patrol Ocean Key is one of the ones I totally wanted to try out to watch that review. It's definitely worth watching that review. Um, uh, yeah, I think Matt had talked to Jeremiah about it on the live stream, and then it, you know, watching the review afterwards. It was exactly yeah, that, right. that barley wine that he's referencing is from Estonia. Okay. Ah, so okay. we don't get a ton of Estonia over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think after this, I'll probably yeah, just relax and watch some TV with my wife or something. Nothing too crazy. Same. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I got some video games to, to play, man. I got to beat Red Dead Redemption. Um, that's my goal. That's right going to take you forever. No, I'm, I'm, I'm probably three quarters of the way through it. Well, once you beat it, it's another like 20 hours for the uh, epilogue. It's like, what? You think, you, you think you're done and then you're not. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I'm counting the epilogue. Oh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and I can rip through it. I'm cheating. So, uh, how yeah. are you cheating? That's the best thing about, because uh, I have a PC. Oh, and you can okay. cheat. Well, that takes all the fun out of it, doesn't it? No, no, because I cheat. I cheat. No, I, I cheat in a way that's not doesn't ruin the game. Fair enough. Basically, I, I give myself the ability to teleport to wherever I need to be, so that way I don't have to spend oh, 15, 20 minutes dude, riding yeah. through. Okay, that's the not point cheating. A to point B. That that's and then I play cheating. the game without. Yeah, I'm not using like infinite health and all that stuff. I'm just like, okay, I gotta go over there. Boom, I'm there. Let's yeah, that's go. fine. They should have fast travel for that. <laughs> like that was the th like there was times like where I was literally just Carrie would come in and be like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm rowing across a fucking river to get to this place." And she's like, "You've been doing it for the last 20 minutes." And I go, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I can't see. That. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get through it so I can um I gotta get myself primed for uh, the Last of Us too. So I gotta I, that's I gotta what finish I'm this for. so I can Last of Us again. So I can go dive right in the last yeah. one. I just checked, and NerdSense is still at 497 subscribers. <laughs> if you're watching this right now, you've not subscribed to NerdSense, and if you're like, I don't have, I don't subscribe to anyone. I just, you know, search videos sometimes to watch. Stumbled upon this, make an account and go subscribe to them. Watch this shit. I got five Gmail accounts. <laughs> 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 I do. I mean, <laughs> we um, want real subs, which who knows I know. If, that's why I'm not. Who knows if these it. are real? And we have a very special episode to drop once we hit 500. True, true. <laughs> very uh, special episode that no one will find interesting. It'd be fun. Yeah, you're not. You're never going to drop this a special episode that I did for 1,000. So, what was your episode? <laughs> What would, for, uh, I drank I drank Jenny Cream Ale for my 1,000. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that was that, oh, that yeah, was yeah. great. That was great. Oh no, this is 1,000th review. It wasn't yeah. 1,000 sub. I don't think I do. No, I never did a video for. I do like a thank you video for um, subs. I never did like a beer for subs thing. I think when I hit a thousand reviews, will be when I finally do Ithaca's Flower Power, a beer I've talked about a lot on the channel and never had on the channel. But yeah, I, I kind of want to do something special like that, but like special that way, not special like this yeah. is five hundred dollars on you know. The black that's what I do. Yeah, that's why that's why I did cream ale because I love it. And people are like, why are you doing it? I'm like, because I fucking love cream ale. You oh, know what I mean? Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, go buy like a beer that you guys can never have and be like, this is delicious. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, Joe from the Beaver Troll said he just unsubbed from Nerd Sense. So sorry I lost you guys a sub. I was trying, God but damn it, Joe. <laughs> Jay Porter calling me out. Something's in it for Kyle. What's the beer? They're not giving me a beer. I just think it's criminal that they have less subs than I do. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, Joe Bertol says when he hits a, hundred, a thousand subs, he's deleting the channel. 
And uh, we all look forward to that happening. Uh, Moskey Homebrew, can I just make a fake account? Apparently Mike has integrity and wants real uh, real subscribers. So. No, Sean does. I don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Carson <laughs> asked me if we have any Doom fans, the Doom uh, video game. Uh, I used to play that. Uh, That's somewhat. on my list. I just I downloaded a new one. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Carson? Carson's, I don't know if you guys know Carson. Carson's the shit. Carson sent me 11 beer mails in the past five months. Nice. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Nerd yeah. He's insane. He's insane. He's insane. But a lot of it, and the cool part is, a lot of it uh, lately has been a lot of homebrew in there. So I come, I'm kind of digging yeah, it. He makes right. really good homebrew. But um, I, I, I downloaded a new Doom, and I played through it for probably... Actually, you know what? If you're in the Scotch, go check out his Instagram. He runs... He's in the Scotch, and he has his Instagram Scotch for everyone, it's called. And it's insane Scotch shit. But anyway, um, I tried playing Doom uh, Eternal, and I was having fun with it because I was in the mood for a shooter, but I just never went back to it. I really got to go back to it. Yeah, it's supposed to get. It's supposed to have really good reviews, and like, I like those type of games when, when you're looking for something just kind of like mindless, and you just want to kind of just play a shooter mm -hmm. just to kind of get through it. So, speaking speaking of mindless, I just I, I'm playing through Mike Tyson's Punch Out for the first time in about thirty years. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and I'm playing it, and I'm not looking up. I, I forgot all the tips and tricks, and so I, I'm like, I'm working through it without looking up anything. I can never get past Sandman, ever. Ever. I, I And I can go all the way to the Sandman without even getting knocked down. The Sandman beats the fucking brakes off of me every time. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but but Sean, Sean loses the glass Joe every time, and I'm not <laughs> God, You're not supposed to tell people this, Mike. I, I, I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, to be fair, Sean kind of looks like Glass Joe a little bit. So it kind of makes sense. <laughs> what, dude? You're kind of you're skinny. You're white. You know what I mean? Come on. Oh, well, skinny. I look like sounds... King Hippo. It's okay. Skinny and white sounds like Little Mac. Yeah. Oh, Kyle's wow. bald bull. Bald <laughs> bull. <laughs> Mike, Mike is uh, Mike is who, Mike's. Uh, I don't know what Mike is. So does Mario. He's Mar He's the ref. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's fair. Did anyone here besides me ever actually box? Uh, I did like a little bit. I never box. I'm not gonna say I box, but I've, 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 friends of mine have boxed, and I've gone with them and put gloves on and got my ass kicked, and never really did stuff with it. That's as far as I've gone. You know, uh, it's a fucking great sport. It, it, I it, love it. it. I, boxing is my favorite. One of my favorite sports of all time. I can sit here and talk. I can talk boxing. From probably the late seventies until the, probably the early to the mid two thousands, and I could next, I could talk for hours and hours. Next time's a live stream. We're, we're doing it because I can do the same. Oh, dude, I watch every single. I watch almost every single fight I possibly can. I got out of it for a big, from like the mid two thousands until like two thousand twelve, and then I got back into it again. It, it's just it was basically honestly it's just because I was in the navy. I just couldn't get time to watch fights. So was, I spent too much time at sea, so I, I, I lost yeah. a lot of time. I, and it's weird because no one in my family really liked boxing. I just got, I got into it. I forget how I got into it, but I was like a teenager and I just got into it because maybe it was the sports or something. But then the root, what really reeled me into boxing, um, it was random, uh, not coincidence, but random cause, where I lived. Basically, I lived in the Poconos, uh, Pennsylvania at the time. And one of the largest training um, centers for professional boxers where they would go to train before a fight was like 10 minutes away from where I lived. So like Mike Tyson would train there. Lennox Lewis would train there. Like all these old school heavyweights and middleweights would train there. So I could like literally drive down the street and there'd be Mike Tyson just run down the road. Or Lennox well, Lewis. This is before, this is pre-internet. So they could just do that. Too. It was basically a cheesy Caesars palace resort in, in, in Stillwater, uh, Tannersville, Pennsylvania. You could look it up. It's crazy. The amount of boxers that would train there. Well, I know Lennox was, was a crunk gym guy, which is, which is in, uh, Philly somewhere, so I'm sure he trained all over Pennsylvania, depending on where. Oh well, a lot of these people would come up there because it was the highest elevation in the Poconos, so they would yeah. want to train at elevation. And that's why they would go there because it was the yeah, highest point of the, the mountains. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It's great. Yeah, next time you do a live stream, let's talk boxing because I'm down with that. Honestly, 
Better yet, why don't we just do a live stream when there's a match on and we can drink and watch the watch it together. That's the live stream. We can do that too. I do it with uh, MMA with Reed. If you know Reed, obviously you guys know. Right, we we, we yeah. throw in the live chat, get shit faced, and watch MMA. It's fun. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not an MMA MMA guy, unfortunately. I like doesn't no, really I, do it for. I watch them, but I just I I, I prefer boxing. I like both. Um, my thing with MMA, just to, we'll end this quickly. My thing with MMA is. It, with UFC and with Bellator, they they always have the best fight the best. So the competition's better. Sometimes with boxing, you, you get some dodgy matchups. I like boxing. Oh, yeah. As a sport, I like boxing better. But as for competition, I like MMA better. But I watch mm-hmm. everything. So it, I'm a big – boxing is, is in my, my blood. I love it. Yeah, oddly enough, my high school – not high school, college roommate, and he's like one of the bigger – um, um, like MMA analyst kind of guys on like serious and shit like that. Now he like talks about it constantly. His name's Micah Ayurado. Um, he does like yeah he he does like he he talks about MMA and he does like odds and betting and all that kind of shit and stuff. It's kind of crazy how it turned out. Yeah. Well, to, to go back to the beginning, the reason why I like Punch Out is because I was a boxing guy, so I immediately was drawn to Punch Out. I loved it. I love Super Punch Out. I love Punch Out. Those are like my favorite games when I was younger. So that's to get to a long way around to that comment. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Nothing says all togetherness like punching each other in the fucking face. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> uh, too funny. Too funny. Man. I love that I'm cursing in his ch- Kyle's channel because I keep forgetting. Oh, he doesn't care about cursing. Other people cursing. It's just him cursing. It, uh, yeah, just me. It just, I no, but I try, to, I try not to curse if, yeah. I'm, if I'm in really, somebody's it, house. It, it, you know what I mean? not bother me one bit on my channel. It's just I don't. Yeah, is all. Yeah. Kyle, can... Kyle curses on our channel. Do I? I don't you remember. Have. You have. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, teased, I teased you about not cursing, and then you you have let loose with a few choice <laughs> words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, fair enough. Ridiculous. Oh, Sean, I see that uh, Barley Wine is Life label made it made it up in the uh, background real quick. Oh yeah, dude, that label. Whoever their artist is is fantastic. It is cool. I need to find out who their artist is because I really would like to get some of it. It's really awesome, and they're a relatively new brewery too. And you want to know the, the, the funny thing? Like, if, if you notice in the review, I never said Barley Wine is Life at all. I didn't even fucking, it didn't click in my head until I was uh, posting the review and I was doing the hashtags and I went, hashtag B-I-O. Oh, I'm such a moron. <laughs> Dude, I do that so fucking often, man. <laughs> like, I'll just totally gloss over shit and then, like, later I'm like, how the fuck did I not even notice that? Yeah. Well, yeah, that is what it is. God, this chilling beer sucks. That is actually... <laughs> One of the weirder comments, not weird in a bad way, but I actually enjoyed it, that I got recently um, was uh, I reviewed a beer by Barrier. Have you guys ever had Barrier Brewing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I reviewed one of their beers. It was a nitro milk style called Hood. And that person, did, the person designed the label is like, I'll try. He commented, like, I'll try to do better next time. Not like, because <laughs> when I talked about the label, I didn't know. It's it's not, I enjoy the artwork. Um, it was just that the hood it, w- it was called hood but it was like written in the grill of a car and i could barely kind of make out that it said hood and i'm like i think it's called hood i'm like that's what it is like i'll try to make, do better next time make it make it more legible and i was like nah dude it's cool i'm like because you know it, it, i i dig barriers labels and uh, there's a lot of labels i dig but there's so many like other half inspired <laughs> geometric pattern games that like if you go into a bottle shop it's like white noise but yeah. you can spot a barrier can from like half a mile oh, away. Yeah. It's kind of like the, it's like the Bourbon County tag. It's like you yeah. know Bourbon County when you fucking see it. No one, no other bottle looks like that. So when you can, even if the lettering itself isn't uber legible or pronounced, it's like carton. Like you were even saying, you saw orange peeking through the tape. You're like, there's got to be a fucking carton yeah. there. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like when you can nail down something that you can see from a half a mile away because that's how shelves are, then that's a good thing. So we'll like see. who farted? <laughs> no, fuck those, fuck those games. <laughs> yeah, I talked to him before. I yeah, like I can, it. I can spot, I can spot, a, I can spot one of my dog's shits on the lawn from that <laughs> mile away. Does it make it good? I just, no, I'm just saying it. It's, it's, it's obvious. That's all. You can just tell. Yeah. <laughs> then again, have we ever seen a hoof-hearted can in stores? I've seen them at your house. Uh, fair enough. We get them in. We hoof-hearted is a shelfie in Jersey. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah, it hits Distro. We haven't had Who Farted in forever. Who <laughs> like, Farted is a shelf. And, uh, who Farted is 1 billion percent a shelfy. And I'm not saying a shelfy like it's all over. Yeah. But it's available. You can get it. I don't know if it's actually Jersey or PA. Because I know that it, I'm so close and I confuse where I get the stuff sometimes. But, yeah, you can definitely get them. In Maine, Who Farted is Distro in Maine for, for, like, since, like, the past three or four years. I heard about yeah. Maine. It was uh, limited. Yeah. Yeah, but, I but mean, they've I, done it because one of the brewers has like ties up there and he wants his beer there or something like that. That's yeah. why it's available or something. I, I've been to beer stores in Portland a bunch of times. I've never seen it up there. It could go fast. Yeah, I think if you can go to their website, they tell you where they drop it in Maine. Oh, right. or Joe, at least they used to. Joe just said they're they're contracted now, so that makes sense. Who farted? Yeah, so I guess. Yeah, we get them in New York. Um. Uh, Joe also said you should just apologize for the channel in general, Kyle, not because it's a beer channel. So that's very hurtful, Joe. Uh, Douglas said some very nice things about all of us. I must say I'm a big fan of you Americans. I'm a ginger myself, so I must like nerd sense. Yes. Kyle's a cool craft beer drinking teacher and what's not to like about I don't give a F word, Matt. Uh, then Douglas winked. Um, <laughs> has any of us had a Kasha brewing in Louis Louisville, Kentucky? Kasha Brewing. I don't know that. I think I had one thing from those guys. Did I review it? I don't know. Let me see. I actually, it rings a bell. I could be totally wrong here. Let me look. And yeah, it looks like Who Farted is not available in some places. You would think it'd be available. That's weird. Um, and honestly, con in contracting... I know I haven't done Akasha, but... Contracting isn't that dirty of a thing. I, I think it gets a little bit of a neg negative connotation, but um, there's a lot of breweries that I enjoy that do it. Uh, Bond Brewing by me. They're such a small outfit. They actually go to a local brewery themselves and brew the beer. Um, you know, Carton Brewing does a bunch of contract down of two roads. Um, you know, uh, so did, you know, obviously so did Lawson's for quite a bit. And I think Sunshine still comes out of there. It was never um, brewed, you know, not there. By, it was always brewed there, too. Yeah. 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 And then, f like, uh, down by me, there's Funk Brewing. They do the same thing. Um, so it's it, it depends on how and what you're doing with contracting. Because then there's other breweries. You know, down by me, there's a brewery, um, like a Lancaster Brewing. They they contract, but they don't give a shit. It's kind of send a recipe to the brewer, and the brewer makes it. Like, they don't come up and dial it in or whatever, and they just kind of get it out there. Um, so, uh, the the one brewery in Pennsylvania a lot of people see is, um, it's called um, Evil evil genius oh um, yeah they, yeah, yeah. yeah they do contracting like that so contracting in and of itself isn't negative it depends on how the brewer approaches it yeah, yeah. Like even as far as augie from carton like he is core beers he won't contract like yeah. he actually makes beer specifically because two roads has a water profile in a specific system so like his boat beer will never be made there he's like i will never make that there he's like i'll make a beer that is boat ish but i'll change the name and make it there because there's no way I'm going to make that beer there because I can't do it. So those are the kind of good contract. But when I was at, uh, at Von Trapp in Vermont, like maybe a year and a half ago, I was doing a tour. When I was up there, like uh, a very popular beer, at least at the time, was uh, called Cloud Drop. And they were being brewed at Von Trapp at the time. By, uh, yeah, up, there, yeah like, Upper yeah. Pass, right? Yep. Upper Pass. So like, uh, it was weird. I was, I was like, you guys make uh, Cloud Drop here? I was like, yeah, we contract brew, brew for them. I was like, oh, no shit. Mm -hmm. Like. The, the facility is really big and really nice. It's it's really cool. Yeah. And they make awesome clean beers. If you're gonna if Fucking you're gonna right go, to, yeah. If you're gonna go to a brewery Speaking that in contract, you want to go to the brewery that makes crazy clean fucking lager because that's the anal re, anal retentive, crazy specific OCD dude. You know what I mean? Like that's the guy you want making your beer. That's why Two Roads does it so well because Phil Markowski wrote the book on Cezanne and he's the biggest fucking crazy nerd person in the history of mankind. So that's why everybody loves Two Roads because they know they they don't, but they can hand fill the recipe and he'll probably make it better than they can. So you know, worst case scenario, it's it's a par for the course beer. It might get a little bit better when he brews it. So it's one of those things where where you contract is just as important as anything else. I think what Von Trapp to Von Trapp, just to give him one last little kind of a plug because the beer is so great. It's so good. Is that the, 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 yeah? Bam. It, yes. The 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 owner gets sits at the bar, and gets drunk there all day on their fucking beer. Like <laughs> what, what do you? I mean, that's amazing. That's what I would yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, like the thing is. You fucking walk in, the old man is at the bar. You see him. He's like yeah. 90 years old and he's sucking down fucking 
tell us all day. And you could do it all day because it's only it's only four point nine percent. That area now. That area is one of the best areas. Like, I mean, you could literally like last time I went there, I went to. Last time I went up that area was when I went with Keith. We went to Hill Farm uh, Festival of Farmhouse Sales. Yep. So we stayed probably about maybe I would say ten minutes north of Stowe. So okay. we had we had you know you have Alchemist, you have Von Trapp, you have Lawson's places right there now, and it's gigantic and fucking beautiful. BBC's um, right there. There. Yeah. Well, Bur- Burlington's like forty five minutes away. It's like 30 minutes you know I mean? or so. Ish. Yeah, yeah. If you're right on the highway. You know what I mean? Where we that's stay, right. which is a little typically north, because oh, north right. of there, north of Stowe is where we typically stay because it, it puts you 45 minutes from Hill Farmstead. Mm-hmm. It puts you 10 minutes away from Lost Nation. It puts you yep. 10 minutes away oh. from 10, be- 10 Bends. Oh, yeah. It puts you 10 minutes away from Von Trapp. It puts you 10 minutes away from Alchemist. Tip of uh, 20 minutes away from Lawson's and then like 15 minutes away from all those good eateries. Like um, there's a Blackback pub and all those places are right there. And then there's that one place. Um, What was the one place you went to? Doc, 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 uh, doc goods, doc, doc ponds. ponds, which was, yeah. which was like that. Their food is great, but their, their cellar beer list. Oh is yeah. It's bonkers. fucking insane. When I went there, when we were up there, they had like 2008 old stocks and all kinds of crazy shit. I was like, yeah, I'm getting ripped. That's awesome. The last time we all uh, like uh, last time I was at like Doc Pond stuff was for my bachelor party. Sean set it up a couple years ago. It was great. It was a great trip, and we, we did all those things. Except we didn't go to Von Trapp, but we went to a lot of places up there. Yeah, we were and, really dumb and, back then. Didn't want to do like we we're like oh Von Trapp. They're like I don't know. We, I don't know what our mindset was at that point. Well, it, it, the thing is, it wasn't like in avoidance we were busy the whole time yeah. you know what i mean it wasn't like it wasn't like we had a whole lot of time like well why didn't we just go to bond trap we went to like we were at four quarters we went to um foam and we went to yeah. uh, bbc and we, we went to a shitload of places and we were up there for, you know for two days it wasn't like we we're up there for fucking yeah. a week or anything you know so in bond trap is, is so easy to get if you want it in that area to visit the, the place isn't super necessary unless you yeah. want to check out the and we can whole, get it here all the time so yeah yeah and that was honestly one of my favorite things about Alchemist was like no, no buying pints of beer was my favorite thing because it almost, it almost forced you to go to other places. Like, 100%. I'll go to Alchemist. I'll drink four samples real quick. I'll grab a case. Let's fucking go. Yep. You yep. know what I mean? And Agreed. Yeah. Now, you, now you can sit around and drink. You know what I mean? So At Alchemist? I don't know if you, because last time I went, I don't know if we were buying beers, but they have an outdoor patio. There's certain days they do it. All that shit. Only certain yeah, days. So you can, yeah. Yeah, so it's not just an in and out ordeal anytime now. Oh, every time I've gone, it's been like that. And, and Same. I, I went that long, not that long ago. So maybe yeah, last time I went days. was last time I went there was uh, it was probably a fr- it was a Friday in August of last year. Kyle, have you made it done this Vermont trip yet? No, I visited a buddy back in college. That's the only time I've ever been in Vermont. Um, well, I, I was at a wedding in New Hampshire and just went to a grocery store or whatever beer store to get petty. But that was that was like a thirty minute trip. But yeah, no, I, I do want to get out there and spend some, you know, real time. Uh, my wife and I have looked into it. There's a B and B. She found that uh, is very dog friendly. Like if you don't bring a dog, they charge you more money. Uh, so like we thought <laughs> about maybe going there when we can. You know, um, uh, that Lost Nation. What what's that mosaic beer they do? Uh, yeah, I, I can see the can in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Purple, purple, lavender yep. color can. Yeah, that's the big one. Let's, is, well, let's, this is my. This is why I love. Um, when I went that area, the first time I went to Vermont in that area was when I went on my honeymoon with my wife. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, her choice to go to Vermont too. She's like, because uh, uh, we weren't gonna go on a honeymoon because we had so much shit going on, on the farm, and we're like, she's like, fuck it, let's just go somewhere for five days and drive somewhere. I'm like, I don't know, you pick. She's like, is, can we go to Vermont? I was like, fine. You know what I mean? And uh, we went to Burlington for a day and a half or two days. And then we went to Stowe area for a day and a half. And then, um, and then we went to lost nation. So uh, we, we, you know, we bopped around a couple different breweries and we specifically went to lost nation because not only did they have beer, it was relatively close to where we're staying, but they also had really good food. It looked like a piece off the menu. And I went there and I just started, you know, chugging some of their beers, order some food. And I start talking to the bartender, you know, it's some super hipster guy and, and like a, jean jacket blah 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 
Those they were sitting there. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was like, no, nah, but he was like punk crunchy, not like, oh, not like okay. granola crunchy. And um, and he's sitting there and he's talking and talking and talking. And then he's he's wearing his jean jacket and then it's getting hot. You know what I mean? This is May. It's starting to get hot. So he takes it off and he has a t shirt on for my buddy's fucking store in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I was like, dude, where the fuck did you get that shirt? He knew every single person I knew. He lived down the street from me, for, like oh, from where I lived in that's Pennsylvania. Nuts. Like we're all like, oh yeah, we started just being like, yeah, I know this guy, this guy. I'm like, oh fuck, dude, blah blah blah. Yeah, I haven't seen him in years. Blah blah blah. I was up here before. You know what I mean? It was just bizarre just to randomly go there, and just the bartender ends up being from Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. You know what I mean? I'm like, how the fuck did you end up here? He's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like one of those guys. So yeah, it was really interesting. It was funny. That's so random. Small worlds. But, yeah. Yeah. But that's a great place to go. The beers are great, and the food's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and there's just so much, and there's other stuff to do, and like it's just great scenery too. It's just like it's it's Vermont. Well, yeah. that, there's a little brewery close to there called Ten Bends. I know they do distro. I don't know if you I've guys heard had of, any of I've heard stuff. of it. I haven't had it though. And and they're really good. But the the most magical thing that I liked when I was up there is that like we would go to like when I was up there with my buddy Keith, we went to this like mall strip mall pizzeria. To get food late one night because we're all rip shit drunk, mm-hmm. and it's like, and and their tap list is Hill Farm said Arthur. Like the tap list was like this yeah. crazy bonkers tap list in like a sports bar strip mall place that served like shitty wings and pizza, and that yeah. was every place you walked into. And I was like, uh-huh. hundred yeah, uh, percent. The wife, the wife found a, a small little restaurant. It looked like a house. You know, one of those they find up there, and we go in and um, they had like 11 to 12 beers that were brewed in-house in this little fucking place. The food was really, really good. I, I have no idea where she found it. We went, it, all the beer was really good. The food was really, really good. I, I wish, I wish they had stuff to take home because the stuff was so good. I, I was really, really a huge fan of all of it. Like they did fruited sours and did IPAs, they had stouts that they did a really good game because then they had the, the, their location was so small. You, you wouldn't believe that they'd be able to brew all that shit in-house, but they have, it, you can see like half the fucking the the operation right from the bar. It was awesome. Well, think about like how big of an operation you know to make Miller High Life and how shitty that beer is. So there you oh, go. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh, I just swore. You're welcome. I forgot I had my High Life over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mm. it's fun to tease, but I can I can cross some High Life. Oh no, like I was saying, I legit looked for High Life today, and I don't understand how that place didn't have it. It it, it was the store by my house that. That that charges extra for everything and like oh, yeah, yeah. so I need a place. fucking high life. I was checking canon dates for everything I saw and I was like, I don't even know why I came here. <laughs> hey, Matt, uh, maybe ten years ago, a buddy of mine, uh, we were when I was in the navy, I got back to the barracks. He says, "Hey, when I come up to my barracks, I have uh, some champagne." I was like, oh, "That's weird." Okay, so I took a shower after work, went upstairs, and he said, "Oh, I only have one left." I was like, "What do you mean?" He, he by champagne he meant high life. And what he meant was, in ten minutes, he drank eleven of them, and he had one left for me. <laughs> I was like, that sounds about right. Yeah, because because he, he was from he was from Minnesota, and Miller is like fucking you know like Coca Cola. It, it doesn't matter where you're from, yeah. man. Like, man. But my one buddy, I, my one buddy, uh, we grew up we grew up to, together, kinda. Like actually, he lived in Jersey, and I lived in Pennsylvania, and and I I met him randomly. My parents used to own a bar. And, and I was bitching and moaning at my parents to buy me an ATV. We were middle class at best. They couldn't afford it, but I was being a brat. And um, and his dad, this guy's sitting at the bar. I was like, my son has one. You guys are the same age. You should hang out. And that's how we met when I was like 10. Wow. And I became really good friends. And, and that motherfucker, yeah, he's a, he's a cop now, New York City cop. Wow. And, and and like when we, when we, when he would, when, when I was, when I was in my 20s, he would come up to PA and he was a cop at the time and he and he would not leave to go anywhere without a six pack for the ride he's like let's uh, get some road sodas you know uh, like get some miller road sodas so we for the trip to scranton which is like a 10 minute ride i was like okay dude you know what i mean it's like yeah some people are built that way you know yeah has, has anyone ever had miller high light it's the it's the blue label right no. I was tempted to buy it, man. I saw it and I was just curious. I didn't buy it, but I kind of wanted to. Like, yeah, I don't even know. 
don't think I've ever seen it in a store. Now. I probably have, but like I just know the label is blue. Anyway. I've never seen it actually in my. It's like for the like imagine the green portion is yeah blue. like right. everything's okay. silver and then whatever here is green yeah is like kind of like a like a mystery of your blue you know what I mean right. so, like your yep. Kyle shirt kind of yeah blue. and um and uh, I saw it when I did the um uh like a curbside pickup when I could buy online that's where I saw it because I typed in Miller High Life and it came up. I was like, I should buy that. I'm like, ah, I'll get the other one. So now I'm kind of upset. I kind of want to try it. Probably sucks because yeah. I mean the regular one's so good. And um, yeah, I'll I'll buy it. I'll do a review on it too. Fuck that shit. I don't care. Side by side. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do a side by side and then I'm gonna cuvie it just for Joe from the very <laughs> <laughs> When I was in high school, I, my my high school job, I was there on St. Patrick's Day in the morning. Whatever this year it had turned out, it was in like on a, on a weekend or whatever. I was at my high school job, and a cop that came to this job all the time pulled in on his motorcycle early in the morning, fell off his bike, was fucking throwing up, staggering around the fucking... He was in uniform on duty. <laughs> was fucking wrecked on St. Patrick's Day. Um, Sean, your dad knows this guy, by the way. Oh, good. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this guy. No, you wouldn't know him, but... Uh, the, I've seen many a cop that have way bigger fucking oh. problems than the people they have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. This is more of my brother's story than mine, but I was there so I could tell it. So I lived in a bit, I lived in a farmhouse. I kind of grew, I grew moved from Jersey to PA and we, uh, my parents bought a bar. We used to have vacation in Pocono. So that's why we moved there. We lived in this old farmhouse and it had a really big front yard. Like the front yard was almost the size of a football field. It was a very big front yard. And, um, and my parents went away, and my brother's like, I'm going to throw a party. Like, legit, I told my parents. My parents are like, whatever, you're fucking 18, do whatever you want. And wow. they're just like, make sure the house is clean and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they're just like, you know, they're like, don't let anybody drive, blah, 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 all that stuff. So they're throwing this thing that gets out of control. You know what I mean? The whole front part, the whole front of my lawn of my house is full of cars, like, parked for this party. And then somebody called to complain. So the cops show up. So my brother's like, got it. Someone called him like, yo, dude, somebody called the cops on you on your party. So everybody's like, he's like, everybody get in the attic. You know, it's like a hundred people. It's a big house. So they he rammed all these people in the attic to hide them. The cop rolls up. So you hide a hundred people in the attic. The front lawn's full of fucking 75 cars. Like, yeah, there's, there's, I'm home by myself. But um, <laughs> so fucking, <laughs> the cops like, what's going, you know what I mean? Like, how do you think when you're 18? And, um, and, uh, and a cop comes up and he's just kind of, you know, doing the whole kind of pulling his pants, like, oh, what's going on? I got complaints. He's like, he's like, well, he's like, I don't see anything going on. He keep it down. An hour later, he the cop came back and was playing beer pong and chugging beers with everybody. That's that's how they rolled in my town. You know what I mean? Like, he, he came back and partied. You know what I mean? He, he's like, he didn't give a shit. You know? And I just thought it was so funny. It's like, it's like fucking 80 cars out there. What are you, why are you hiding people in the fucking attic for? <laughs> When I, when we were teenagers, uh, Sean lived in Boston. Sorry, this is the last um, story I'll tell. And um, cops got called on us a couple times. Oh yeah, but these cops didn't come back and play beer pong though. But go on. No, no, no. But the, the cops came in with like like everyone needs to leave. And this girl runs into into the the bedroom where I was drinking, and she's like, "Oh, the cops here! They're kicking everyone out." I'm like, "I'm not going anywhere." Oh, you have to. This thing we have to we have to leave. I'm like, "I'm fucked up. I cannot drive. Fuck those cops!" Like. Sean was at this party, so I'm not even. This is not a joke. That's true. And the, co- the cops come in, and I'm I'm sitting there drinking beer. He's like, "How old are you?" I was like, "I'm 19." He says, "You need to get the fuck out of here." I'm like, "I'm drunk. I can't go anywhere." I keep sipping my beer. He's like, "Okay, you stay then." And he fucking left <laughs> <hit> the room. <laughs> it was good logic, you know. Like, I was I was so fucked up. And this this girl, I mean, I'm not gonna name names. Sean knows what I'm talking about. Was crying on his bed. And I was just like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm wrecked. If you, I, I, I cannot be trusted to walk right now. He's he probably like, could right, have thrown. He probably could have thrown you in the drunk tank, though. Thinking back on it, like that's probably the lot. Uh, what he should have done. No, th- 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 that's us. fine. Th- that's fine. The issue was there's no fucking way I was getting in the car. Yeah. End of, of story. So, and that was sort of my logic. Anyway, but the cop was definitely like, yeah, fine. You have to stay then, and then left, and then I got more drunk. It was fun. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. I think um, me and Matt's stories have taken over your channel here. It's, yeah. it's fine. It's the fun part of doing live streams is 
I mean, it's, I don't know, in all seriousness, it's good to do the beer content, but I, I like getting to know people's personalities. So I think probably, I mean, we have a decent number of people watching, so I think they do like, you know, kind of getting to know people on a human level as well. Yeah. So I have no issue with it. Yeah. I got some fucking stories, man. <laughs> I've done some crazy shit in my life. Let's put it that way. We should just so have a live that way. Like, we should. Huh? <laughs> what? Thanks, Mike. I said so is Sean. <laughs> We should just have a live stream where we just tell like crazy drinking stories or just not a live stream and just do it <laughs> privately with all of us instead of live. Instead of, just, instead of putting it out there. I think that would be safer. Yeah, there's a, okay. there's a few. I got, I got, I got, I, here's one. I got I to gotta tell it because I don't want to <laughs> tell a crazy story. So this is about as crazy as it comes. I mean, I got some good ones. This is as crazy as it comes. So, so for when I was 20, until I was about 30, I used to be a DJ, like an underground weird electronic music DJ. And I played up and down the East Coast. And um, we really loved this uh, a group called Somatic Responses. Um, they were this weird electronic group from Wales, which oddly enough now, I was a big fan of theirs. And that one of the, guy, one of the guys in the band now is a big beer junk and he follows me on YouTube. It's very bizarre. <laughs> and... Um, and so we wanted to we wanted to see them live, and and when I say underground music, like we would like we would do all kinds of crazy shit. We would break into warehouses and throw parties, and like cops would chase after us. So it was crazy. Anyway, so we wanted to throw see them live. So we we actually just wrote them. We're like, yeah, we want to see you live. How do we make that happen? And they're like, uh, you give us money, and we're like, yeah, we don't have any. And they said, okay, we'll cut you a deal. We'll send you some music. You get it pressed into a record. Sell the sell the records you give us half the money you keep the other half and that is the amount you would need to get us over there so did you just tell the story on an app on, on, on a on a video recently i i might have said told the story before but i don't remember telling it for a year or two if ever unless i just watched an old video recently because i remember you something like Me? you like got got your one of your favorite <laughs> bands to play again for some or something like that no, no, no. That you're talking about leeway. When yeah. I was talking about leeway. And oh, okay. Okay. Said, no, this isn't that story. Okay, go on. That's another one. Anyway, and so we get this record press, we get the money, and then we have these people come over. So we're like, okay, now what are we gonna do? We, we had this kind of big thing, big people in the scene kind of thing. So we end up throwing this party together with all these people. Three or four of these people are friends of ours from New York that are like relatively big hacks in the electronic music scene. We find this place close to where I lived in Goosboro, Pennsylvania, middle of nowhere. <laughs> middle of nowhere and we're like okay perfect we'll set up there we have we have speakers the size of like a, a small bus like it's crazy it's it's like this is get out of control we're gonna whatever and then since this band that came over was our first time in the united states people started finding out like all these other people started canceling gigs just to come see this other people play so it ended up kind of snowballing like an outdoor festival when it was only supposed to be like 100 people and in the middle of nowhere and whatever. So all these all these musical acts start canceling because they're like, well, I've never seen this band. I, it's an electronic music group. It's not a band, but I, I'll just use band. And then and, and, and so all these other people that throw events are getting angry at us because their headliners are canceling because they want to see this other people play. And mind you, this is free. We're doing this all for free. We didn't charge anything. It's just come one, come all, have a good time. Long story longer. The, the music starts going it's crazy there's people people from fucking canada and france came it was crazy it was insane the amount of people there and it's loud as fuck and it's weird electronic music and we're like this is insane this is out of control it's a mind of its own we don't know what we're gonna do about this and halfway about not even halfway into the night the party started at eight o'clock when it got dark at like 11 o'clock we start seeing these lights come through the woods we're like what the fuck's going on like 10 to 15 hillbillies show up on our ATVs. So you have to imagine there's a bunch of weird Euro trash, like French people and Canadians, like dancing to like weird noise in the middle of the woods on drugs. You know, have to be on drugs. <laughs> so all these hillbillies show up on their ATVs. Like what the fuck are you guys doing? We can hear this shit from a mile away, but they're mad. Cool. They hang out. They, a bunch of them to ecstasy for the first time. So you have this like, hillbilly dude in jean cutoff shorts dancing with this euro trash dude from france and it's just it's 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 sodom and gomorrah in the middle of the fucking it's like it, it's like a it's like a deliverance and, and fucking sodom and gomorrah had a baby and it's like going crazy and it's it's insane and there's fire uh, good fires like bonfires and weird crazy electronic music i could send you some of the music you'd be like this is fucking weird and it was awesome it was great 
And then, uh, and then it went from like eight o'clock at night to we at around like 5 a.m. We're like, okay, let's shut it down. And we said, let's shut it down. And like 10 minutes later, cops show up. And we're like, really? And he's like, yeah, he's like, I've been trying to find you motherfuckers all night. He's like, I can hear you, but I couldn't fucking find you. He's like, we got complaints because all the other people that were throwing events in the tri state area were like, uh, call cops on us to get us shut down because they're pissed off because all the people left and didn't play the thing and he's like yeah i've been trying to find you guys all night and he's like who's responsible for this my buddy carl and this is gonna sound like a total like bullshit claim right now but my buddy carl who is now the sound engineer for beyonce is fucking <laughs> he, he, he we threw the party together yeah he's now beyonce sound engineer and um and he's like he's like yeah he's like it's my fault and he's like okay he's like here, he wrote him a ticket for 150 bucks for littering. It said, clean everything up and left. <laughs> and that's that's what fucking happened. Now, to bring the story home, everybody fucking leaves, and it's a core group of us cleaning up, and there's about 15 of us. And then, um, and this is the lamest part of the story, but my favorite part is that, like, so there's about eight of us there, and there's eight, well, uh, eight cars left, the, a group of the core people that threw the party together. We clean up, and we go to leave, and my, um, this one guy, the one girl's like, S I lost my keys to my car. We're in like the middle of nowhere. And she's like, I lost my keys in my car. You're going to have to drive me all the way home. She lived like two hours away and get my spare keys. I'm like, we're not doing it. So everybody looks and looks and looks and looks. And, looks. and one, and one friend's like, I'm not fucking looking. She's an idiot. Because he was an asshole and he still is. So after now we're looking, nobody can find it. She's driving like a, 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 a like a 92. What was that weird car? Saturn. She was driving a Saturn. They don't even exist anymore. Nope. Um, and I was driving my dad's Mazda pickup truck, Mazda pickup truck. And randomly I put my key in her car and I unlocked it. Like with a Mazda pickup truck key opened a, 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 a Saturn coupe. And I used were like, to be able to oh open my, my God, that's crazy. So it opened it. And then we went inside to go forward. Like, cause the one guy was like, ah, oh, she, she locked him inside. She locked him inside. We go in there and end up not finding the keys. The guy who wouldn't look the whole time had him in his pocket. So that's how the story. Holy goes. shit. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, that was like I have like 19 stories like that. I've done some weird shit. Man. I remember I my had nothing to do with beer, so everybody got so you have like one viewer now. After that story, so <laughs> and we have like five less subs. But this isn't going to be a long story. But it's it, it's the key story. My very first car, I I locked my keys in the house, and then I locked my key. I mean, I locked the keys in the car, and I already left the house. This was still when I was with my parents. My parents were already gone for the day. I had a pen cap in my pocket. And it was such an, it was like an 88 Oldsmobile Cutlass. And like, you know, like the uh, Bic pens, like the little, the little Bic pens and you had the, the, the removable mm -hmm. caps. I took the cap off, stuck it in my thing and I turned and I locked the fucking door. And this was like when what? like, when, when like Oldsmobile was, was like trying to be future, like futuristic <clears throat> and they had like, not like, like a pull handle on the door. It was like a side handle. So it was like super yep. cool. But yeah, no, it literally unlocked it. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, that's my, that, that's my key story. <laughs> I think we do need to do a, uh, a a a real live stream or a podcast and just just stories. Yeah, much uh, much to do about nothing. Like it's a free for all beer random... tube stories. Yeah, drunk history. <laughs> drunk. Some... We'll do our version of drunk history. Some stories I don't think should be public though. No, no, of course no, not. No, you can, you can, you can, you can tell them in a way because honestly, I just said. I'm in the woods playing music illegally on illegal grounds with a bunch of people doing illicit drugs. I'm not going to jail. Well, your job <laughs> might care about that, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it can be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. my drinking stories, I was 21 or older, so I just want to put that out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, I, was like I can't believe I had that third beer. <laughs> um, it could be like one of the days of beer tuber palooza like on this day you post your your best drunken story or like we could like do that oh that could be a good beer tuber palooza thing we, yeah we post the uh yeah, that's good, yeah. on, you know this week on thursday no, no. let's let's rip off let's i want to you guys ever watch drunk history yes yeah. yes yeah. we should do that we should rip that let's rip that off let's let's do, like Let's have us all submit a story we think is funny, and that person has to tell the story in a live stream. But that person has to get a little bit drunk before they come on the air to tell the story. Oh, that's a good idea. So it's like an embellished kind of like half tipsy, like like rambling, incoherent, basically like one of my regular beer videos. But <laughs> we're telling a story instead of talking about beer. 
I, like I have that. I have a physical problem with uh, getting. <laughs> no, I mean this sounds bad. It, it, once I start to get a little like where I, I'm getting a little stumbly, I black out completely. Well, even better, but 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 you actually I know my limits. Like right now, I could drink like nine other beers and I'd be fine. But some yeah, nights yeah, I'm when I'm too. like, okay, I know I know to where I can get to a point where I'm totally fine. But I know if I drink like four more beers. I probably shouldn't drink four more beers. Get to that point on purpose and then start. Be like, okay, yeah, I'm cool with this. And drink while you're doing it. So 100%. while you're getting, while you're telling the story, it just downhill. And if that ends with you just going like into the table, more, that's, that's even better. Well, it's not that I, do you I black out or do you brown out? That, he he, he no, browns no. out. You brown out. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't like, I don't hit the floor, but like, but like the next day, I, I won't recall like a lot of shit. Or he'll fall asleep yeah, and then wake that's up. A, that's a that's a brown out. Well, I mean, that's you because you, you're still functioning and do stuff. Like you could like next day, people tell stories of all the crazy fucking shit you did, and you're like, I don't remember. Yeah, no, well, it's it's not it's a relatively recent thing. It didn't happen until the last few years, where like. Like I used to like I'd be I, I can remember being like at um not this Sean a different Sean's apartment no, and I yeah. I was so drunk I was so drunk I couldn't pick myself up off the floor I, I you know I was I was face planted in the kitchen and people walking by me and I was just laughing and laughing and laughing and I remember everything very clearly if I got to that point now I would I mean it would have been hours of of lost memories <laughs> you know but in so those you guys days aren't I, old yet wait till you get old. Oh, I'm 36. I'm not, I'm not okay. Yeah, 30. We were both. 36. That's about when my tides turned. That, that right around when I turned 36 was like when having a beer meant having a beer. Like, like for example, like, like, I, like when I was just younger, like it was like, okay, I, I could have like three or four beers and wake up the next day and I'm fine. And I'm like, okay, well, and then I'm like, okay, well, I can actually legitimately have like 10 beers and I probably feel a little shitty. But I'll be fine, but I'm not going to be tip top. But then I'm like, if I really have a rager, I'm going to feel like shit. Now, if I drink one beer, I'm fucked. So I might as well drink five or ten. It doesn't matter. Like, it's all or nothing kind of thing for me now. It's like, it doesn't matter. If I have one beer, I'm going to feel just as shitty as if I drink eight beers. That's how it is now. It's just, it's all or nothing. So it's like, yeah. Meh. This is not a brag. It's a it's a brag, I guess. I hate him. I can, yeah, I hate you. No, the, he's it, gonna it, say he's never had a hangover. And oh, I think he's a lion motherfucker. No, no, Sean. Sean knows. Okay. Be true. I've never Sean been able to call him out true. on it. I haven't. I haven't been able to real figure it out. No, I. I mean, I. I've had. I've gotten completely, completely, and utterly fucked up at Sean's house, and I'm up in the morning before everyone, and I'm fine. Sean could. Sean can vouch for this to be true. It's possible. I. I. I, I don't know if he's a really good actor or not. So that could be something we just don't know no, about, Mike. It, even. <laughs> even no, this is true. Even like if, if I drink with my wife, whatever, she she gets. Oh yeah, she gets three. The... She gets like three day hangovers. Yeah, we know that. And but <laughs> no, this the, the thing is, it's not even, it's not even a good thing. I know I, it. It sounds like a good thing. It's not because there's no consequences for me. No matter yeah. what I drink, I don't. I no matter what I drink, I do not fucking feel it anymore. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. This is but, slowly turning into some kind of like Denzel Washington movie. Like, there's no consequences for me. You know no, what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, but the thing is, if everyone's like, oh, I'm so jealous of you. I'm like, not really, because I, I can get fucked up every night of the week. Every night of the week in the morning, I'm fine. I am every time. I never fucking, I don't get he headaches. No, I don't I, get I, sick. I, I get nothing. No, I, and I'm, I'm all joking aside, I know. Because I was that person. It's yeah. not. It's not gonna last forever. Ever, oh, I, 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 you know. I, I, feel, I know that. But I'm, <laughs> I'm counting my blessings as I go. <laughs> so I, I'm happy that it happens, but it's not like a good thing. Like, if it, like, I, I can recall. This is so. This is my last strong story. I was, um, so I, I was in the barracks and I got really, really fucked up and went to my, my room and I drank a big thing of Carlo Rossi, those big bottles of wine. And I came back down, and someone wanted to do shots with this guy Jacobs, and Jacobs said, "Fuck you, doing with Mike, because that guy can drink." So me and Thomas, he's sober. We drank the whole bottle of liquor from top to bottom. Then we went to bed. The next morning, I'm at work, fucking lugging shit off the ship, and Thomas is on his hands and knees, throwing up, screaming at me, telling me to go fuck myself, while I was working. I was like. 
26 years old at this point. There was no consequences. On a fucking Wednesday, I could do that shit. You fucking drink 30 beers, a big thing of Carlo Rossi, and then half a fucking, half a fifth of, of liquor and be okay to work in four or five hours later. I couldn't even, if you, if, if I drank like a handle of wine and then any type of liquor, I would be dead for days. Oh, days. I can't, <laughs> I can't do that now. I, I would be blacked out in, in a, in a world of hurt, but I, I wouldn't have a hangover in the morning. Oh, oh no. I see, I'm, I'm, diff- it. I'm different in the sense that like, I still get up at 7 a.m. and get whatever needs to get the fuck done. I just feel like hot garbage. Right. Same. You know what I mean? Like, I still, like, I, my wife hates me. Like, I get up every morning. I'm like Carlton and shit dancing around. Even if I feel like shit. (laughs) Oh, I just, oh, oh, my wife. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I feel terrible. And she's like, how do you still have so much energy? I'm like, I don't know, but I feel like crap, but I'm just, I just got to do this just to get, just to get through it. You got to (laughs) fight through it. Sorry, Kyle, what were you going to say? Well, anytime I hear someone say hot garbage, it makes me think 93 hot garbage. So I just want to. <laughs> What's that? All right. Before we get into this, maybe what we should that? just uh, no, we're call it. Into it. Oh, that, that. I forgot about that. Let's call yeah. it. Okay. My bad. All right, then. Sorry. <laughs> 93 hot garbage sounds like the worst radio station of all time. That's no, it's not. It's not 93 hot garbage. It's 93 garbage. It's 93 garbage. Yeah. There's no hot. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're confusing I've, I've heard... 93 garbage with, with 88 and 93 lumber. And Keith, where's Keith, by the way? Wait, he was supposed to join and just oh, hang he's out. Moving he? oh. Oh, he's moving today. He's moving today. Offered help. Uh, Kyle, you have any drunk stories, or are you just made me and Matt tell news? <laughs> um, of me? Uh, let's see. Or well, things you've seen. You don't have to tell stories about yourself. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> I um well we used to throw parties in college you know make money like to pay rent and um we, everyone was 21 we ID'd everyone uh when they came in we had the uh you know scanner to make sure they weren't fake IDs and it was very thorough uh we hired security from the uh Buffalo Police Department it was legit yep. anyway got that out of the way um <laughs> you know, the, uh, there was a laundry chute and we were at, uh, in the basement <laughs> It's the one of, time we asked Kyle to host a live stream. <laughs> this is what we start talking about. <laughs> Sorry, go on. And uh, someone keeps pouring beer down this. And, you know, I'm mad because, like, we bought the kegs of beer. So yeah. I, I go up and I'm like, I'm like, who is dumping the beer down the garbage or the, uh, the laundry chute? This is ridiculous. And just a line to the bathroom. No one's even holding a beer. So I'm like, what? Go back down. It happens some more. So I run back up to go yell at the people again. Then I see a woman open it up. She's throwing up into the laundry chute. And everyone's getting covered with throw up in the basement. Not just beer being dumped out. Yeah. Yeah. So that was Holy fun. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's a good story. Thank you. Yeah, everyone was 21 so and, or older. Yeah. So that was good. Of course, of course, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, me, I don't know. Just... I, I just get goofy, right? you know? like just hey, there's him being sillier. So. When I first started drinking, I was way older than most of my friends who started drinking. Like they all had years of experience on me, and I did not know how to. <laughs> I didn't know how to handle myself because everyone's experienced drunk, and I am just happy, and I want to hug everybody. Like I was just walking up, like I want to hug you. It was. I was like, I was almost 20 years old. I was 19, almost 20. The first time I ever got drunk. All my friends have been drinking since they're like 13 or something. So at that point, like that's like seven years more experience of oh, anything. Yeah. So like, and, and for me, like it, it was all new. So the endorphins were very, very high. And I was, it was a very, very fun, very goofy, very silly time. It was way before I ever used to black out. So it was good times. <laughs> I remember them fondly. That's well, what I can remember, yeah. Well, I, no, I remember all this shit pretty clearly, weirdly. <laughs> oh, brother. I remember we walked into one party. This is actually, no, we'll tell that story another time. Never mind. <laughs> um, now that it's almost June, uh, just maybe like a last topic we could talk about. I, I mentioned a little while ago uh, 2020 Beer Tuber Palooza. Oh. You know, do we want to. I don't know, Matt, we've been kicking any ideas around your head or we haven't talked about it in a while. It's it's honestly I don't I don't even know. 
I still don't even know what to think, man. You're talking to a guy that still isn't going to work, but at the same time, I feel like the next 30 days are going to change drastically um, based on what people think. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, my personal preference would be to push it to the end of the summer. Yeah, like um, August, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, did you get, I mean, not to talk about the super personal stuff did you figure out your future kyle did you yeah um it's sh- i should be good. i should be good less uh okay. there's like even deeper cuts coming from somewhere i should be good yeah <clears throat> okay so we're, you know adhere to your schedule because you're a teacher and that kind of makes sense um and and basically push it toward the end of the month and then go from there and see what happens you know what i mean it, is the goal um, to do I... this in person uh, if we can, uh, well, the ultimate goal, and I think we kind of talked about this previously, and it's, I think it's what we should stick to, is make it an in-person event for those that feel comfortable to attend, and if they want to, they they can. If not, then we'll we'll make it so it can be done both in person and remotely, mm-hmm. and then whoever wants to be in person can, and whoever doesn't want to doesn't have to. I mean, we don't. It doesn't. Have, it can be anything we want it to be. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing about now, it. So. If, now, if Sean is not comfortable, if he's not. Can I tape him up, put him in the trunk, and then drive his car down to your place? Um, as long as he's naked when you tape him, and the tape is duct tape, and then uh, if that's the case, then that's fine. That's already it's already planned. Just don't ship him USPS because you'll never find. I'll get him. lost. <laughs> we'll put a trillion label on him and send him because you'll never get it. I'll end up back in Nashua, and I don't think Shane wants to see see me duct tape naked on your front porch. Like, well, you're wow. gone. Won't be the first time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So we'll see. We'll basically, we'll see what happens. We're going to do something. And, you know, it's one of those things where we'll figure it out and go from there. Because if it's just all of us doing remote stuff, that's fine. I mean, we could do it really cool. We've already talked about it, you know, yeah. having like a, multiple feeds and multiple channels at the same time. Maybe making yeah. like a, a beer tuber palooza channel and just having the feeds running all at the same time in the channel so people people can jump from feed to feed. Can you have multiple feeds even it, running on one YouTube channel? I would assume so. That'd be cool. Yeah. If not, we could figure it out. Yeah. If it could be, you know, we'd be able to figure it out in some form or fashion. Yeah. And then even do do that, do that. That might be the way to go, even if it was in person. You know, have a feed out outside, have a feed maybe in here. Yeah, good that call. way people want to go and, and go to specific places and do their own thing and just have like a random feed. But still do beer reviews that are taped that get posted yeah. later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, we just make it bigger in all sorts of ways. I mean, I, like something I like to do is let's say the four of us are in person and then like maybe on that live stream at 5 p.m. We know that Joe from Jow's Arcade's jumping on that we do like a little live stream with yeah. him and others included, even though he's not there physically or whatever. Like it would be cool. You can open it up that way, which is nice, but then still have maybe hopefully some of the in-person stuff like we did last year. And then a whole drunk history at the end. That would, oh, yes. oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That would be a lot yeah. of fun. Let's try not to I live stream see... that. I just want to see either Mike or myself do that whole like uh, Chris Farley Tommy Boy into a, a table, <laughs> just have it explode <laughs> everywhere. I'm I'm willing to do that for the cause. Um, if we get a bottle of Bacardi 151, oh fuck no, at the house, I can clearly imagine this happening. I can get that, but I right now I have a full legit handle of uh, Everclear if that if that works for you. Uh, okay, fuck it. Sure, let's do it. Have you ever had Everclear? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well I just, I, that was that was my first pandemic buy. I was like, ah oh, let me go buy a handle of Everclear if I need it. You I know said, what I mean for sanitary for a fucking hand sanitizer, not even a drink. I sat in a hot tub with a d- bunch of dipshits like fifteen years ago. Uh, no, yeah, fifteen years ago. Drinking uh Everclear and Gatorade uh, for hours. It was fucking awesome and horrible at the same time. Looking back. I remember seeing black dots swatting at them <laughs> after my first Everclear <laughs> night. I think it was, wasn't that, wasn't it the same night? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. 
the next <laughs> the next morning, I, I, we, I, I went to work with, with one of my coworkers, and we're at the back door. We, we weren't even going to work. We are going to visit someone for some reason. I don't even know. And then I'm, like, swatting like this, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, you're not seeing all these fucking flies everywhere? <laughs> I'm just seeing black fucking dots. <laughs> Oh, God, Everclear is bad news. And I just found out you can get it in Massachusetts now because Carrie came home with a bottle the other day. She's like, I'm making limoncello. And I go, where the hell did you get Everclear? She goes, it's legal here now. I'm like, oh, no, mm, that's the years. You have, they, they make two versions, though. You got to check because they make a lower no. alcohol version. Oh, no, this is the legit one. It, yeah, it was, legal, it was legal in Mass still a few years ago. I smelled it almost gagged. Because yeah. in Pennsylvania, they can't get it. They get, like, the... The twenty percent less version or something like that, and like when the one guy who makes limoncello that I know a friend, I like fucking bootleg, fucking legit, fucking Everclear for him. What do you want? I went camping. Oh, I mean Kyle, people. not me. Kyle, 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 is he down there? Kyle, Kyle. No, Kyle's above you. Kyle's above you. Literally right above you. Kyle, Kyle. Kyle. Well, he's below me. Do you think why can't Google Mises just figure out like they they should have everyone the same because clearly if you want to look at somebody so it pisses you off, Sean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like flipped on the one the screen we're seeing is Sean and I on the bottom. Yeah, oh, but weird. on on the stream we're on the top and Mike and, and Mike's below me and yeah. Matt's below you, so it's like Yeah, that's weird. When I used to go camping with these people a few years ago, um this one old guy would make everyone that was new to a shot of what he called diesel and it was just ever clear. And so he's, it was like sort of like an initiation, this fucking old man, like having gang initiations. It was weird. <laughs> it was, oh, you're new. You need to have a shot of diesel. Like, oh, what? <laughs> Jesus. And it was a uh, fucking ever clear. It was horrible. Jesus. It, it's you actually not, it's actually not need to do it or. I did it. Yeah, of course I did. I'm, I'm not a fucking <laughs> pussy. I, I did it and I fucking blacked out. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I seriously, I, I, I fucking drank that and then I was, I don't, I don't remember what I was drinking. I was drinking a bunch of shit. I sat on like a, this swing chair with some guy who was telling me about, he works for some credit card company and how like acupuncture fixed his elbow and all, it was just this nonsense shit for like four hours and I was just like, I just want you guys to shut the fuck up. I just want you guys to shut the fuck up. But I, <laughs> Jesus, I was so drunk I couldn't walk away. <laughs> if you don't like, if you like dirt monitors, you're an asshole. That's my, that's my fucking take on today's thing. Yeah, but if you, have you ever, you have a dirt monitors for life. Is it Great Lakes? Is that in Great Lakes, Illinois? Yeah, that place sucks. Fair enough. <laughs> Why? Great Lakes, Illinois. No, the brewery. No, Great Lakes, Illinois sucks ass. Oh, not the, the brewery. I've never been to the brewery, but Great Lakes, Illinois, the place sucks ass. <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it, Mike. Fucking <laughs> let us tell me how you really feel, dude. No, it's, no Great Lakes is where the, the Navy Boot Camp is. Oh, fair enough. Been there. So I picked, it, I picked this up today from a bottle shop on the curbside pickup. And this is the shit that always makes me go giggle. I, I got this today. Wow. What did, I can't see it. 5 2020. Oh. It, it's best it? before eight days ago. So they wow. like literally like they, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not a date Nazi. It's a Dortmunder. It'll be fine. And it's, it's look, fine. He's fine. Look where it's brewed it. Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. So, Mike, you don't, your, your hatred once again displaced, man, or misplaced. No, no, no. I, no. I think it applies to Cleveland, too, man. I, <laughs> I, you know, pretty much all of Ohio, except for. <laughs> Except for a one mile radius around Jackie O's Brewing, pretty much oh, everything. Jackie O's, yeah, good call. <laughs> oh, and that other one. What's that other really good brewery in Ohio? Who farted? Not who farted? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Jinx. Uh, no, they're the. They make um. Willibury, Willibella, Willib. Oh, Conky Dog. No. Oh. No, Joe, Joe from the Beer Patrol knows what I'm talking about. Willoughby? Willoughby Brewing? Is that what it is? Willoughby? They make good beer. Uh, Central, where's Central Waters? In Michigan, I believe. 
Oh, because I'm trying to think. Because like when when I used to trade with 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 the guy who was a semi who, who farted, he he was like right there. He used to send me Central Waters and some other stuff. Willoughby Brewing Company is out of yeah Willoughby Willoughby Ohio. They make they make a beer. It's called. Bum, 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 bum. Let's see. There's a really good beer they make. It's like a nut something. That narrows it down, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sounds like something sounded like. Jesus. Nut, nut smash. <laughs> Get your real stout. <laughs> you don't feel great to hear stout. So. It sounds like something Sean be into. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> oh, you're the best, Mike. <laughs> There was a point at like 45 minutes. I'm like, wow, I can't believe we're wrapping this up so soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> An hour later. It was, yeah, like, it was, it was like this lull of like, well, we're done with all together beers. And then an hour and a half later. No, um, that's not. That's not. Now, my favorite part is like um, the last one. Yeah, we should definitely keep this to a fixed time frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the smartest decision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. It is actually a yeah. smart decision. We just not smart enough to adhere. Yeah, that's what Mike and I do all the time. Okay, let's yeah, keep this route to five minutes. Seventeen minutes later, we're still talking about some crazy, some pilsner. Like <laughs> the fixed time for the uh, hot butcher one, Matt. Right? They went, the what? Oh, the hot was butcher. It the one did we have a fixed time for it? We tried to say let's keep it to we... an hour. We we said let's keep it to an hour, and then it did. Oh, that yeah, that's yeah. Right. I totally that I did I I that. I stripped that from my memory before yeah, the podcast even started. I don't think I honestly, when, I did the, when I did the podcast with uh, Jude and Jeremiah, it was like I had to let I had to tell them we're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, we're done. I was like, I gotta go, dude. I was like, this is I can't. <laughs> so I knew it was like we could have kept going and going and going. He wouldn't oh, yeah. stop. That was an easy two hours. I mean, that was just it was very yeah. easy yeah. to do. It, it, it was actually good. Um, in a lot of ways, just asking him questions, it, he didn't he didn't just answer them and go. He would like talk about them. It, it was a, like he'd be an easy guy for an interview in general. You know what I yeah. mean? Like oh yeah, like just a, really, a lot of bad interviews, man. Like yeah, but he he's just a, a friendly guy and uh, clearly a fan of what he does. So it, it, it's like an easy time because like, he's he's happy to talk about stuff. It, it doesn't feel like this stuff that he'd be worried about you asking he just looks like he's just looking to talk about what he loves it, it's a really easy time to talk to him so the best way i could put it and, and this is going to be a little bit kind of adulty nc17 so for those with sensitive ears you can you can block them right now but you know when you know as 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 a male um one of the better things you can actually get as a male in a sexual way is fellatio it's it's a fantastic thing and it's and it doesn't suck let's just put it that way uh, and I, I we're ha- i was having a conversation with somebody once about what makes one better than the other in that instance and the big difference between what makes because it's all good it's like pizza or golf it's fucking fantastic either way but what sets the best from the best apart is wanting to Wanting to be there in the moment, the performer, the person performing the play show, when that person is into it and wants to be doing it, it makes that infinitely more enjoyable on both ends. And 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 and, and, and you can see it. And and that's the most crudest way I can an- analogize it because Jude, you know, and Jeremiah, when they did mine and when um, Jeremiah did ours, he wanted to be there. He wanted to talk about it. When you get an interviewer who is there because they feel they need to be or, you know, it's kind of what they do and part of what they, what they're supposed to do when it it doesn't even matter with beer, but any interviewer who feels like they're being forced to do an interview, that's not a good interview. You know, it's a person who wants to be in the interview, wants to engage and wants to talk. That makes a good interview, not the person interviewing the person. You know what I mean? It's like my favorite podcast ever did was with Kimmick from Alchemist because he wanted to sit down and chug beers and talk. You know what I mean? It wasn't because I was good at what I did. It was because he wanted to do it. And it's not it's not a, a special formula, you know? And that's what separates me. And it's passion. It's, he, he's passionate and he wants yes. to talk about it. And that comes through, you know? 
and I think I didn't, and, I didn't, I didn't need, I, the blowjob analogy didn't need to happen, but it did. So. Not even a little bit. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yes. I think did we talk about it on that? Or I, I've had this conversation with other people too, but I think you guys as well. It, it is kind of hard sometimes to like lock down brewers and breweries to do things like that, and, and it, it's. I think that was just such a great example, not to like, oh yeah, it was so cool. Like, cause I was a part of it, but like, I think it was just a really good example of, it was beneficial to everyone. Like people got to know more about him and his brewery. We got to know more about him and like, coming from as a brewery when we review their beers. I never once thought about it. Why he likes sending us beers like that. I figured, yeah, it's cool. Like, you know, it's same his names out there more on the internet, but like, we make a point to break down beer, not just real quick on on tap. It's a four out of five and that's all you get. But like, here's eight minutes of me dissecting it. And that's like, useful information to a brewery. I mean, it was just, I, I just, I think that was such a perfect example of why more brewers should want to do things like that or podcasts or interviews or whatever. They, yeah, I know time is tough and all that, but come on. They do. They, they want to do those things. They just don't want to do it with, uh, people like us, and I mean that in a way that, like, you know, YouTube, beer tube people, there's a stigma to it. Uh, I've heard it directly from brewers and journalists. And, you know, I'll try to talk this in a way that doesn't touch on like subjects that are going yeah. on right now, but it's like there's, there's certain, you know, there's certain people that do stuff in YouTube that make us look like fucking idiots. And brewers see that. And when they see that, they assume that when we talk, then we're all the similar ilk, that we're all similar in what we do. So I see it constantly because when I used to do my radio show, it was very easy to get brewers to come on and talk. Granted, it was 15 minutes as opposed to an hour. Um, but then again, they had to call in and I come to them when it comes to the podcast. So there's a little bit of trade off there. But when it was the radio show, it's quite easy. When I first started doing a podcast outside of the radio show, um, and, and my signature was all the YouTube stuff, and I found and I didn't know it at the time, but it was very hard to get book people for interviews. And then eventually, I, 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 I was thinking about why, and I'm like, you know what, let me just be a little bit more frank in the email, and let me just write my name and not write anything, have any kind of signature. And I started to get a little bit more of a kind of positive response on it. And then once I started to actually talk to brewers and you get past that window of like, oh, you're just a YouTube guy. Mm -hmm. And it, it definitely is thing that existed. They would be like, oh, you're not like the YouTube guy that I see online. Like, you're, 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 shit. you're not just about being a personality or trying to make, I'm not a stepping stool for you to get popular. You're actually genuinely curious yeah. about the process and all those kind of things. Yeah. And then that that opens up that opened up a lot. And then and then and and once you start doing that, then you realize okay, there is a stigma about it. there legitimately is. There's a lot of breweries from a couple different angles too, because there's a lot of breweries that view it because there's a lot of people just go on YouTube and say this sucks, this doesn't suck. I know what I'm talking about. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. But then there's but then there's a lot of then there's a lot of um then there's a lot of journalists that really hate YouTube. Like, and I've talked about this with legitimate, and when I say journalists, I mean legitimate, like, you know, went to school to be a journalist. That's what they do. They view YouTube in the negative print, not because of anything other than the way newspaper hates online media and it, that, it, you know, the world's passing by and long, long form, long form writing and storytelling in that format is kind of going by the dodo and they kind of feel weird about it and they don't know what to do with themselves. And a lot of them have pivoted and a lot of them are doing online stuff like John Hall from all about beer. He used to be with all about beer and now he's doing beer edge and does steal with this beer and all those kind of things. So a lot of people are, are, are changing, but there's this stigma to it. It's changing. You know, there's people like um, Jeremiah and the guys from hot butcher. There's other breweries that are, looking at it as a positive thing now so it, it, it's a it's a it's a multiple angle battle you have to deal with it because it's some people view it as cool like the guy i'm gonna do the instagram hangout with with loves youtube videos he thinks it's cool jeremiah and hot Butcher thinks it's a positive thing the pariah guys enjoy it you know what i mean there's a bunch of people that really embrace it but then there's a lot of people that view it as a negative so it, when it becomes more about open and honest and and thought-provoking conversation as opposed to just I'm right 
um, uh, this is good and it sucks, then everything gets better for everybody that gets a shit. I, don't know. I had a cool one recently. I, I don't talk to a lot of breweries, um, but I did a local beer and they wanted me to let them know when I did, you know, post a review. So I sent it to them and um, they were excited because they, they opened in September. So they're relatively new. And so they're like, this is a first for us. So that's pretty exciting. And then they said, you know what we miss the most is having people sit at our bar and like, we can watch them try our beers. We can see the expression on their faces. We can talk to them about what they think. And again, if they started in September, I mean, they only had what, like six months until they lost that. So they said, it was just really cool to watch someone go through all those paces because we haven't had that in a few months. Um, and I think it speaks a little bit to what we, we were saying about someone like a Jeremiah or, um, uh, pariah or whomever is that appreciation of the the long form of it versus yeah, I use untapped I'm not you know but like the untapped thing but I think that what you're talking about makes a lot of sense as well someone went to journalism school like well you didn't do anything except you turn on a camera and talked about a beer you know this is you know four years of my life in school and in, uh, in an old medium so I, I, I get what you're saying I, I never thought of that but it's also the flip side of it so like let's just take something like um I don't know how you put it. So let's think um, uh, BJCP, um, um, judging, or even uh, Cicero, uh, for that matter. You know what I mean? They're two markedly different like uh, approaches to talking about beer. You know, BJCP is really focused on style um, and, and dictating and talking about and sensory detecting uh, beer and, and style and flaws and all those kind of things. So, you know, a Dortmund version, yes. An IPA is supposed to be this. A yeah. cream ale is supposed to be this. And if if it's not that, why is it not that? Is it because it was brewed wrong? Is it name wrong? Or is it off flavor? Cicerone takes that a step further. There's a lot of that in Cicerone, but it's a lot of front of house, back of house stuff. How do you handle tap hit, ha, uh, tap systems? How do you approach beer and selling it to the consumer? All those kind of things. So, you know, you could sit there and be like, I'm BJCP certified, or I am a, you know, uh, a lower level Cicerone, anything outside of Master Cicerone is kind of like, you know, like w whatever. But, um, you know, the people that I read books by, you know, the people that I lean into, Randy Mosher, um, you know, Bill Markowski from Two Roads, uh, you know, Michael Jackson, they were neither BGCP certified yeah. nor were they a Cicerone. So does that, does that mean that they don't know what they're talking about? You know what I mean? A lot of what they've written and a lot of what they spoke about um, is taught in those kind of things. So does it mean, does that title, does having something, you're a journalist, you're a BJC, BJCP judge, does it mean anything? Conversely, does it not mean anything? That's the thing. You have to find a balance between all of it because it's not saying throw that shit away. It doesn't matter. That's not how it is. The world isn't left or right. It's a lot of great middle. And it's about being, okay, you have to do this. Otherwise, you, you're not valid. Or if you do this, you're invalid. It's not cut or dry. It's not black or white. That seems to be the struggle with all of life right now. But in the beer world, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's much the same. So I think I'll, here's the thing, though. I think smart people, the compassionate people, the honest people know that. And then they see through it. So the, the fringe stuff, it's kind of like... And I know I'm, I'm not blazing so much time, but it's like kind of one of those things where like tattoos, you know, like, I feel, uh, you know, I, I was always so worried about having visible tattoos um, in my life, even working in the industry, because I was like, what if I decide to do something else? How am I going to be perceived? You know, you know, I have tattoos in my hands, you know what I mean? It's not like I can just cover this shit up yeah. and, um, you know, and then, um, you know, it was an honest, you know, I was, uh, you know, people would tell me, like, what are you going to do about that? And then, it, you know, as I grew older and I, I figured out what I wanted to do in life and what I wanted to be, I realized that if someone had a problem with me having tattoos, business-wise, like I wanted to go be employed by somebody, I don't want to work there. Like, that's the place I don't want to work. It's almost like a positive now for me. Because if, they, if they're so hung up on that, then what else are they going to be hung up on what else do I get to tight ass about? Do I really want to answer these people as far as a superior? And I don't. Um, that's why I love the job I work at now because they've never mentioned it once in their life. They don't give a fuck about it because they just care about good people doing good things. And it's kind of the same thing, you know what I mean, in the beer world. It's just like, you know, that ancillary bullshit that doesn't really mean that much doesn't mean that much. As long as you're just being good and honest and doing what's right. Yeah. Well, 
I, I found it uh, weird. I mean, I, I, I messaged Jeremiah about something he had posted on my Facebook, um, and I, I wanted some clarification. And he, he was very easy. He, I thought it was used, he would, he would give me a quick answer, but then he asked me how I was. And then he wanted to shoot, shoot with me via a messenger for like an hour. Like it was really like he was just a friendly person, an easy person. It very like it immediately felt like I already knew this guy, and there was no yeah. benefit to him, except that he was just a nice person. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the, the conversation wasn't like we talked a little bit about beer, but we were just talking about other shit too. And yeah. like the conversation ended when I said, I, it, it, we, but he had, I guess he had put his kids to bed and I had to go to bed myself. It was like, it, it didn't feel like, it didn't feel like I, I was dealing with like hearing here in the company line about anything. Like yeah. it was, you know what I mean? It was just a different type of person to deal with. It was, it was nice. Honestly, it was, like, it was, I was weird about messaging him about at all, but I just didn't understand what he was asking me on that post. And then it was just, he was clear, very to the point. And then it was just shooting the shit. And I, I don't care if he hears this, but I'm glad Jeremiah, I'm glad they send you guys beers because that way there's, there's six people to text instead of just me. So, <laughs> I'm horrible at texting and keeping up with texts. And he, he texted. Quite a bit. So now when you yeah. divide it by yeah, six, it's crazy it's human interaction. You can text all you want. I just I want human interaction. No, 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 no. I, and I like it too, but I'm like I'm the worst at messaging back and forth to people. Like I'm the worst, worst at it. And you would text me, and like literally, sometimes I would go like five days, and then I'd be, then I'd be like texting back. That's I'm that guy. I'm that yeah. asshole. You all have that one friend that you text, and then five days later, your response. I'm that fucking guy. Uh, half the time and i, I kind of i would always feel bad and it's not because i didn't want to talk to him it's just that i would be like i'm kind of doing other things right now i just don't want to text i don't know so thank you very much guys <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. yeah well and, and he's and it maybe it's been two hours we should probably wrap it up but it, to mike's point you know i i am someone who tries to not that I have, he like seems to refuse my money as I tried to buy anything from Hot Butcher, but 100%. anyway, that's a whole other podcast. Um, he's, he makes it easy to want to support his business, you know, and I, as a consumer, I do try to, you know, be conscious, conscious of like, oh, this seems like a good company, or, or I know the people, I've got to know the people who own this restaurant, I like them, they're good, I want to, you know, get to them business, I, I want a good product as well, obviously, but uh, he makes it really easy to, you know, want to support his company um because he, he does seem like a generally nice guy and I, I think also yeah being friends with him on facebook and uh you kind of get a peek into his life and then you get you know like the text messages and then doing something like that like we did for two hours it's like no like he's just a good dude who likes beer and his family like everyone else that's cool you know yeah it, it does make it it does make it like a, a business you want to support because it when you know who you're supporting yeah um, and you know it's going to a cause that's worth giving to. You know, the, the beer is good, but also the people that are around yeah. the beer is good as well. They have a true passion, too. It's not just yeah. that, it's not just them, like, trying to have a business to make money. Obviously, it, they need to make money, but, like, there's a real passion behind everything that they're doing. Yeah. It, it just, when he just talks about it, it's, it, it's sort of infectious. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, start to, you start to get, like, excited yeah. about what he says. So. Yep. He is. He's yeah. passionate. I'm just an appreciate, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and we've had this conversation so many times on camera, off camera. You know, it, it, it's the they make good stuff, and they're sending it to us. Like, what else do you want to say? But like, I mean, no, no that's the thing. And I think, it, it, and honestly, it comes off. It comes off if you present it in, in an honest way. It comes off honestly. So it's like yeah. one of those things. Where it's like, what is it? The chicken or the egg? Do I like Hot Butcher because they send me free shit or do I like Hot Butcher and therefore they send me free shit or is there something in between? Do I say a lot of nice things about Kane because I like their stuff or am I just being a homer? It's like people kind of trying to read into the uh, to some kind of ulterior motive about what you say. And, and it, it, you know, there's a reason why you like the breweries you like because they make good stuff and yeah. just because you like them constantly doesn't mean you're just some kind of homer because they 
actually might be consistently good. The same thing goes with Hot Butcher. I've, you know, probably like, I don't know, 70, 75% of what I have from them I quite like. Yeah. 5 to 10% is amazing. Most of it's kind of everything in between. And then there's every now and then there's one I don't like. And it's not like I'm just like, you know, some people might view it in a way that like, oh, every now and then you're throwing in one just so it seems like you're evening the bunch and be like, that's not it, man. You yeah. know, <laughs> now, conversely, conversely, don't be surprised that Brewery sent you like, you know what I mean, too, because in, in the hot butcher, too. You know what I mean? Like, there's breweries that send me stuff, and they know exactly who the fuck they're sending beer to. So it's not like they're like, "Oh, just send this guy whatever." They're like, "No, send this guy this, this, and this," because yeah. he's gonna love it. You know what I mean? So, you know, there's a bit of back and forth and stuff like that. But you know, if someone says Hot Butcher sucks across the board, all their stuff is hot garbage, they're wrong. Or Ninety garbage or whatever. It, 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 that's biased. The same way all of us would be like, everything they make is fucking awesome. That would be biased. Now, unless you honestly believe it. If you did, that's fine. But it's one of those things where, you know, good breweries make good stuff. It's like you say nice shit about Whole Farms. So you say nice shit about, yeah, I say yeah. nice shit about Kane. It's not because I'm doing it because I'm trying to curry favor. It's just because it's really good. It just so happens yeah. that one of those really good breweries just happens to know my mailing address. Yeah. I was glad to have a hot bush beer I didn't like because <laughs> it was just like finally all right this is fair I don't like it and that, and that's the thing it's not you didn't have a hot you know you didn't you didn't have a hot butcher beer you didn't like you had a you had a you had a beer that wasn't right and that's the biggest thing is discerning right. the difference between a beer that was off versus a beer you don't like no 100 percent but I but I also I also spoke about that fairly but like it was like I couldn't pretend I was liking the beer. I just wasn't liking the beer at all. It wasn't, you know, and, and I did say, flat out, I'm not going to drink this when this is over. I, you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't enjoy it. it. I don't think it was necessarily like the beer in and of itself, but I was glad to have one that I, that wasn't blowing my mind. Cause everything I've had, I, I've, I've really quite liked for the most part. And this is one I was like, Oh man, this is not doing it for me at all. Oh, you could see it from a mile away, even before you drink. <laughs> <laughs> no you could i mean it was like i mean not that it looked bad but when it's so markedly different than the other beers yeah when you poured it i was like oh yeah. that's good this is gonna oh, be an interesting conversation yeah. it's gonna be a monkey <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it, it'd be easy to it would be easy to, like if i was uh less honest to just sort of go along but i, I don't know like like i am unable to have a sip of beer and lie about it. You can see it in my eyes before I say a fucking word. You know what I mean? Like, even like I, I have a beer. I'm like, wow, this smells awesome. I take a sip. Mm -hmm. You can see it in my face before I even say a word. I, 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 I hope, I hope that anyone that does listen to Sean and I that that, 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 that we do come up honest because I, I'm, I'm fucking dead oh, and serious. That's, and that's why Kyle and myself believe you should have more than 500 subscribers you should like be well 506, that. 506. i don't know i'm i'm, I'm partial to 523 but you know, yeah fair I'm, enough, I'm, fair I'm, enough. yeah no I, I i i don't even it's fun to have subscribers but it's it's just fun i get to fucking drink beer with my best friend and fucking shoot the shit with them Would honestly you know? oh man I'm, I'm you're my best friend too man thank you yeah. <laughs> Sean who? Yeah, hashtag Sean who? Oh, this guy fucking, <laughs> fucking glass Joe over there. Hey, <laughs> damn it! You guys really are getting. You know, you guys are ganging up on me. <laughs> Man, all right, I think like Costanza, we should end on the lap. So, uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, thank uh, Sean so much for being the one to uh, set this up. You know, it's on my channel. Sean did all the heavy lifting, so I appreciate that, Sean. A lot of people were watching, commenting. I appreciate everyone. We're still figuring out the best way to bring comments up and stuff, but we tried to get to comments and all that. Um, you know, obviously, like like Mike was saying, I wanted to add to it. You know, it's it's not all about subscribers, obviously, but the more subscribers you have, the more interaction you have, and that is a really cool part of doing this. And it's you know, meeting these guys, meeting you guys, and I'm I'm being sincere. I mean, it has been the coolest part of doing beer tube. Um, you know, so like definitely everything is appreciated. Um, any last words, gentlemen? 
No, this was awesome. Um, in the in the famous words words of Frank Costanza, yet again, it's not a lie if you believe it. It's true. Facts. True. Right. Subscribe, to Nerd Sense. subscribe to NerdSense. Subscribe to NerdSense. Subscribe to 